video about it, but why not just do it live? Might as well, yeah, do it live, like uh, like Bill O'Reilly said, do it live, right? Yeah, it makes it, it makes it easier too. No editing. True. That's what I. That's what's great about live streams. There's no um, no editing at all. Actually, it's interesting. I like. Uh, oh, go ahead. My bad. I'm trying to see. Um, so I'm live, but no viewers yet. Uh, what is it? Uh, Russell Brand and a few other people I watch. Their live streams has live mm -hmm. edits. They can do B-roll during their live stream. Oh, cool. Awesome. That's really cool. Like they got those memes. So you'll say something funny and then a meme will pop up while they're doing a live yeah. stream. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got a few people on. I'm used to more <laughs> at this point. Let's see. Oh, let me get my uh, stuff up. Give me one second, sir. All right. So we're going to talk about banking, the banking uh, situation going on and the debt ceiling and how that impacts our investments. We've got some good articles. I, I hope we don't, I hope we don't default. We I mean, won't. They'll, yeah. they'll extend it. Yeah. But if yeah. they say they don't, it will be a massive blow to anyone who holds dollars. And if, well, mm -hmm. if you have precious metals and cash, you do good. Because mm -hmm. just like the last crash we had with that liquidity, that liquidity problem in 2008, people were selling properties like Wachovia for one dollar. Thousands right. of properties for a dollar. Yeah. So for our first comment of the evening here, yes, please go ahead. Jokes are always great. Just like it. All right, I'm going to get on the live stream on my tablet. This person super chatted me last week. Boy, he, he, oh, he has, he has to know every super chat helps out the channel. So he said super chat every single video. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Anybody that super chats, they get priority comment uh, posting though. Oh, are they doing it on YouTube or off of StreamYard? Uh, it's through YouTube. I mean, okay. the StreamYard's linked to YouTube. Because they do, I, I know you get to keep a lot more with YouTube. I mean, mm -hmm. with, uh, StreamYard. But... Anyone that super chats, they get like, you know how the airlines have priority boarding? So mm. for me, I have priority commenting, even if you're the nice. only there so far. <laughs> Give me one second, sir. One second, I got to catch up to you. So, all right, tell the joke. Glenn first, tell the joke. Come on. We're waiting. I'm out of jokes at the moment. I did tell some stories on the last live stream that a lot of the audience liked. Oh, actually, I do get a funny joke. Right, yeah. Real quick. All right. Yeah. So if a, if, a, if a girl asks, like, hey, you, you meet a girl, and you're just like, hey, uh, I got a funny joke. She's like, what happens if I flip a, flip a coin? And she's like, uh, it's going to be either heads or tails. Like, so what's the chances of me, uh, it being head? 50%? You lean in? <laughs> yeah. Got that one. Okay. Sam Talks Ooh. Finance says, I'm not going to be staying on long. Just wanted to say we're all happy to get so much content. Hope your night's going well. Yeah. Well, I've actually backed off. I was doing daily uploads in April because I had to meet my watch hour. So now I'm doing like mm. every other day. Nice. Right. So we've got 11 of you on. Good deal. I actually do have a funny story. Um, I had another... Um, I had these girls on Facebook hitting me up and um, they wanted to talk to me. And I think it turned out that uh, they were like, they were fake. <laughs> it's a fake profile, mm. like fake pictures and stuff. Let me see one second. Oh, got it. I actually put this on. I'll, I'll, we'll see. Uh, at the end of this, we can do a compa comparison. See how I did see NVIDIA. Are. I did see NVIDIA after hours. Yeah, I was actually looking at that, trying to prepare for the video. Mm. Actually, one second. Let me see. NVIDIA, I'm happy you brought that up. NVIDIA, NVIDIA. Wow. Oh, my so, God. I feel like an idiot for selling those options. Yeah. I you got, see it? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, it's up $75. I'm currently trading in NVIDIA right now. After we talked about it. that, I, I've been putting my robots on in NVIDIA for the last few weeks. Damn it, seventy five dollars. I haven't seen a stock do that in I can't remember how long. Damn it, I feel I feel even dumber now. Thanks yeah, for that, that. there, uh, Mikey T. All right, here comes the joke. Why do Canadians make love doggy style? I don't know, tell us. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe this is a finance channel, right? <laughs> finance with humor. All right, we'll spit it out, tell us. I'm not Canadian, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I 
I do have a new site I'm going to use for stock analysis, by the way. No more Yahoo Finance. I'm going to use, I'm going to use, um, I forgot it already. I think it's called um, stock, stock something. Education. Actually, I had um, one of my uh, female subscribers told me about it. You have them? I, I do. They're like they're like fifteen percent of the audience. But Tatiana, who said she was binge binge watching, or said my content was binge worthy. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So she sent me. Um, I, I've had several people on here tell me different things to use, but I don't know. I paid attention to her. Give me oh, a well. second. Right now, I'm gonna go live right now. Hit next. Rumble. What was that? Right, we got uh, Door Gunner showed up. Said hello, everyone. Oh, it's called StockAnalysis.com. Interesting. Let me let me load that up real quick. Or actually, if you can build on the stream. Interesting. Oh, here we go. That's so they both can watch the hockey game. I figured there'd be some hockey reference. Poor Canadian hockey teams, you know. Didn't Keaton show up? So howdy. I'll say uh, I've been to one hockey game, and it was probably the best live sport event. I've, Isn't it? I got yeah. One there was in a, Vegas. No, not not in Vegas. It's only when I was in D.C. And oh, was, the Capitals. Yeah. Yeah, I actually. A, funny, I watched. I saw the Capitals uh, play the Lightning this year. Wow. Yeah, Damn. I went to like was three there, hockey games. Was there any fights like with the uh, with Always, the uh, yeah. players? Yeah. yeah. What's neat? What's neat at lightning games? You can kind of like after the first period, you can just sneak around wherever you want to go. So you can go all the way down to the first tier. Yeah. And you can get like right up close. I got. That's exactly what we did. Me, and my, my friend, Timmy, we went to the front row. And yeah. And we got. I got a puck, and we saw two audience members fight about it. They fought over really? the puck. Really? We caught a puck. Yeah. The puck. Wow. I That's didn't awesome. get the puck. I didn't get the puck. Oh. The puck went behind me. The two guys behind me were oh. fighting, and then I yeah. picked up the puck. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah, my buddy and I we snuck down to the first tier and it just we just walked back, you know, like walked past the people they didn't care. So it was cool. Really good view. Like, you know, it's like right there. Not at the glass, but like probably ten or twelve rows behind it. And I'll yeah, say the, the, awesome. en the energy of that is better than like a basketball game. Yeah. The lightning almost won they almost had a three peat. They lost the Stanley Cup last year, but they had an early exit this year to a Canadian team, ironically. <laughs> we are – actually, I need, a, I need a screenshot. The Florida Panthers are probably going to end up in the finals. Oh. Yeah, tell me about it. They do. Even well, I, it's, it's more enjoyable, obviously, when my team is in it, but, you know, it's still, it's still fun. Yeah, the Florida Panthers, they're kicking butt this year. Alt. They're about to they're about to sweep um, the team they're playing, the Hurricanes. They're up three two. They're playing now. It's in the uh, third period. Of course, I did. That was actually uh, once. Uh, I can't edit it. It's fine. I, I I'm, it? I'm I'm live on Rumble right now with this. Oh good. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, Rumble. I don't know what it is. Rumble has been like YouTube. It's like kind of low always for me. But then mm -hmm. Rumble. Like some videos, like 800 views on a live stream. Really? Yeah, my views have started to pick up on here since I've been doing. Uh, yeah, NBA. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not an NBA fan. I saw LeBron James got swept. That was cool. He got swept. Mm -hmm. Oh, win. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really follow. I know. I think the Miami Heat. Uh, they're in it this year, but I don't really follow. The closest to, Tampa doesn't have an NBA team, but Orlando has the Magic, and they're not really. They haven't been good in a while. And then Miami has the heat. But yeah, I agree. I'm not a huge um, basketball fan. Oh, we got more jokes here. Let's see. I remember when the Hurricanes were the Whalers. That's what they used to be called. I That's probably before my time, I guess. Wow. How do Scotsmen find sheep and tall grass? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Abs were the, oh, the Colorado Avalanche. That was the team that uh, won it last year. They were the Nordics. Interesting. And the Lightning used to play at the fairgrounds over here. Oh, right. Before they had their own. Uh, anyway. Oh, we're supposed oh. to talk about finance. We're talking. Yeah. About <laughs> uh, give me one second. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to bring this up real quick right here. I forgot what I was going to talk about today. I just joined. Uh, in, and then... uh, NVIDIA? Oh, God. Don't remind me. Um, it's up $75. I wish. 
I wish I would have held that because you know what I did? I bought leap options a year ago. I think I showed mm. you on Think or Swim. Um, I bought them like last summer and they for September, September 15th expiring. Well, I sold them in February after the earnings and it's way up now. I'll have to go back really to feel the pain. I'll have to go back and back test and see how much money I would have made. I mean, I got like big, I got a couple big orders on NVIDIA. The current price of, give me a second. What price is it? At? We're getting hockey history lessons here. 100, so. I got a 31. So these are the levels that I have uh, NVIDIA hitting. $313.40. I have it hitting also. Actually, it needs to go to here, Control T. I got four price levels for in, NVIDIA that they should hit soon, or hopefully before they expire. Do you have it? Um, can you put it on the screen? Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Let me minimize half this stuff. Meanwhile, we're getting hockey history lessons here. Trailers. Were they in Connecticut before they moved to Carolina? Minnesota North Stars moved to Phoenix. Old school hockey fan, love the old Norris division. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, right? that's um before my time, obviously. Sure. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong. I always have a video hitting uh, 315. Uh, window. It's so funny because if you, have you seen the PE ratio on NVIDIA? No, 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 I have not. Uh, 993. Well, everyone was predicting it was going to drop, but I mean, after earnings tomorrow, like, there's no way. Here we go. All right, there, there it is. So here's one of my robots trading this right now, currently. And this one is not too bad. So this is one where you start it, I think, right here. And it has no losses up $200 so far. Not too bad. This is the price levels that it should be hitting mm -hmm. right here. One, where is the price at? These four price points. Oh, the range. Oh, no. It's, uh, I mean, my calculator is just telling it's going to hit these price points and then okay. exit for a typical uh, short term profit. No, oh, okay. Well, not too bad. I mean, NVIDIA is pretty much a roller coaster right here. This is these zones right here. If anyone bought, at 302, that was probably one of the easiest trades to take. 302 to this gap. Oh, and then see what's doing tomorrow, of course. Yeah. We'll definitely see. I, I mean, NVIDIA, if it gaps, guys, I can't tell you what to do. But for me, every gap that I've seen with NVIDIA always fills. We got a gap right here. A gap right here. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have a trader that trades just gaps in the market. Uh -huh. Anytime there's a gap. Typically, it always fills. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's near like 100%, especially if you're in the NVIDIA. Watch. Every single gap will fill. See? Every gap fills. See? What causes the gap? Is that is that between um, after hours? So right before a market close, let's say Friday, like 30 seconds before the market closes, a mm -hmm. massive player puts in a bid or a sell or they put in a very leveraged order. That mm -hmm. order massively moves the market, and since it can't, it can't uh, have basically there's no balance to that order. Mm -hmm. It closes out, right, as a as an open order. As, okay. I'm sorry, as a, as, and then on mo Monday open, it gaps from that price, and then that's how banks manipulate these prices. So when you see like this right here, mm -hmm. two hundred uh, two hundred and sixty two dollars and fourteen cents, and you have up here two hundred seventy two, people like me would actually would take this trade every single time it gaps. Because NVIDIA, if you watch right here, see, look at that. Every time How it gaps, you, it fills. Do you have to be in before, like before it closes? No, no, no. So what happens uh, when you, when you see, I couldn't do this manually. I, it's, it's quite impossible to do it manually. So mm -hmm. when I trade with my, uh, I need a good robot trading platform. Uh, if you want a good loading robot trading platform, do Gunner or Door Gunner, uh, MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5. But when it yeah, comes to Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like gap, you might have a customer. But uh, if you're looking, if you want to hit me up, guys, go to my Telegram or my Facebook or anywhere Andre Jim Clinton or my YouTube channel. That's way to hit me up. But basically, every time a gap happens, if you program this situation scenario, which is very easy to program, like for mine, I analyze these opens and these massive gaps and enter 
hundreds of trades at, during these gaps mm -hmm. and then exit the trades when they uh, full out when they fill. I mean, if we just go back, I I, have this, I won't even look at it. Like, I won't look at it. I guarantee every gap on NVIDIA fills. I can go back five or 10 years. I can almost guarantee every single time it fills. Filled. And you're seeing, you're filled, seeing what doing filled. tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I can look at it. I mean, even yes, even today when it did that, because mm -hmm. I remember I don't trade NVIDIA. I only trade NVIDIA because you said something about it. Yeah. Right. My robots are trading it right now. It's up $200 about, uh, no mm -hmm. losses. So watch every single gap NVIDIA fills. See this right here? It yeah. It filled again. It filled again. It filled again. Look at that. Down to the damn T, to the pit, it filled. Each trade filled. Yeah. So I have to um, put in my two cents on this comment here. Oh, um, go ahead. So Rob Smith joined. Haven't seen you in a while, but my take on the debt ceiling, um, it's not like a regular household not paying their bills. Um, basically, like if you or me, if we uh, ran up our credit cards to the maximum limit, we can't mm -hmm. just go to our creditors and say, hey, raise my limit because I maxed out all my credit cards. But that's what the government does, basically. So I know they talk about that it's like we're not paying our bills, but I don't quite look at it as an apples to apples comparison. And yet it is disappointing from an investor standpoint um, that the market is dropping because of that. But mm -hmm. I just I, I look at it, you know, the, the government what? is able to do things with money that the general public is not like if if you or me max out our credit cards, we can't just go to our creditors and say, hey, raise us more because we maxed out our credit limit. So that's my hey, take. Uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Smith, I, let, me, let me ask you something. If you think that this price, so basically the banks and people who control the markets, the, the big players, they're pricing in the markets. They're doing this, doing this intentionally. All right. If we do default, they say there's a 5%, 10% probability and 90% that they're going to uh, basically bail us out again. If I was a big player, I would intentionally push the markets lower. I would intentionally manipulate it like these gaps so we can profit any more, even more so. So as a big player to me, like when I look at my robots, they all say the same thing. Pricing in big players to make a massive move like this. See this right there? Here's NVIDIA. From open to close, they jumped up $30 about. What day was that? This was uh, February 23rd. People think oh, that the yeah this is the like, old. like when I tell people like if you no why would you sell like this this is a clear like this is a clear indication that you have to enter this is a clear buy you know what I'm saying I had been in there and I sold the day after it did that but it kept yeah. running up yeah it should I mean it, it, it even it even states it right here like if I if I can show you in a program my program would told you that these two areas will fill after this bump up because the banks entered here and here. I can so, actually you get you can actually see where they enter too. It's actually very see, obvious. Can you see uh, this pattern like if it happens again coming up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here. Well, let me know the next time I want right to. Sell. Right here. This just happened a few days ago. Like if my robots were actually trading this, see, see these Wait, little see triangles. Yeah, see these yeah, triangles. That's nothing. I wish I would have got into NVDY. All, all, so yeah. all the fans that are in NVDY, good job because. Yeah. So Rob Smith, so whatever Tesla is not doing, have you seen what Nvidia is doing in the after hours? Hopefully you got an NVDY. I don't remember if you did or not, but it's going to be way up tomorrow. So or it should be, I would think. Uh, how do I say this? I can't tell you guys what to do financially. So I'm not giving you guys advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So my robots took in two trades at this open. You see this big gap right here? Mm -hmm. This is like a clear sign that whoever controls this market Basically, there's insiders on every single trading group, trading stock, Forex pair. It doesn't matter. There's a group of players who have a lot of money intentionally doing this every couple of days. Like, look at NVIDIA. We're talking about since February, I'm sorry, from May 19th till today. It happened twice. Within a week, the exact same pattern happened. That's why I tell like, like I, I, that's why the way I trade is just analyzing how they enter and how they exit. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Oh, Tatiana showed up. So, listening while driving, just got to work for a late shift. Would love to stay yeah. on, but we'll catch up in the morning with my coffee. Well, perfect. Nothing like coffee with THB Finance, right? So that's that's here, here, here. time to watch. Here you go. Look at this. I mean, look, this field near eighty percent, near eighty mm -hmm. percent, and if you measure from the top, almost a hundred percent fill. Like, if you had an automated system, you can basically in, enter and exit and take out this trade. 
And if I was an options trader, let's say I was an options trader, my entire strategy would be basically understanding where the key players are at and just trading the way they're they're exiting because mm -hmm. their 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 entries and exits are very obvious because of this right here. This was a uh, March twenty fourth. Look at the difference. You're talking about nearly ten dollars open to close difference. This is this is a clear sign that at some point it took only. So we're talking about from the twenty. It took five days for this price to fill that price. That to me is a very highly manipulated trade, but I don't know. Uh, what's your leverage and options? Uh, it's usually uh, ten to one. So you you so your your margin would be pretty restrictive then at ten to one. You well, if I like, held, I mean, I I would have made a fortune if I held the ones yeah. I had in February. Like even here, like oh my god, that's such an easy trade. I know, and I sold. Oh well, I mean, I I made like eighty percent on the trade, but. Mm. Could have been better. And then and there's two factors that I tell people, especially clients of mine, there's two factors when it comes to trading. There's your initial target profit and then there's your initial uh, run to trade. The two things that I see, the main thing that I see that traders do incorrectly is called capping your uh, profits. Never mm -hmm. cap your profits. You, you, you'll always lose money off of that. So, for example, and you, we'll, we'll see this. See if I'm incorrect, right? Let's say hypothetically uh, at the current price, NVIDIA goes up to here goes to like $313. That's where my price target is, right? $313. I have that. My robot's already telling me it's going to hit this price. And if it does that for an option trader, once that secondary gap happens, I would lever up on um, with call options. Right? Lever up. I like that. Yeah, I would I would open up a bunch of call options and then mm -hmm. exit at this price. Mm -hmm. So Rob Smith says you're too complicated for him. <laughs> But he didn't buy he didn't buy um, NVDY yet. It's okay. Neither did I. Waiting oh, for Amazon and Berkshire yield. Max still have a hundred thousand in TSLY. Andre is um, too complicated. So <laughs> this is why, to simplify it, guys, I trade mainly by automation, and I I know how my robots are programmed and how I personally trade. So I see that if you guys want to make it easier, the easiest way is that manipulation makes money. And if you're a big player, follow the manipulation. Like manipulation is so on this stock it is because I don't trade stocks that much. I usually look for dividend yields. And uh, but if I do trade stocks, like he was telling me, I want to see how much money I can make with this. So right now I've made $200 uh, and I ran this robot since when? How many shares did you get or did you get call options? Um, actually, it doesn't work that way. Uh, uh, so when I trade, uh, I, I remember I'm, I'm not trading in the United States. I'm trading uh, in the Belize right now. We don't oh. buy shares. Uh -huh. We we have controlling ownership. It's, it's very similar to uh, options, but we mm -hmm. we can like trade it by spot and own a percentage temporarily. Okay. So it's not we have no we have no rights to dividends. Oh, we have no forex. Yeah, like four, forex trading. Yeah, basically forex trading with this. See. Our hedge position, our calculated, it's, it's basically a CFD. Mm -hmm. uh, here's our trading signals, and there's uh, here's our lot size. So my contract size is basically 100 shares. Uh, my tick value is one to one. If I go to my next broker, I probably could get like 200 to one on here. So that's why the gains are pretty big if I scalp with this on a scalping mm -hmm. robot. Right. Wow, you guys got 16 players, uh, some, some people in here, guys. We were up to almost 20. Oh, if it, um, if I'm to, to address one oh, more thing he said i agree i actually like to buy and hold too a lot of just mm -hmm. technical analysis gets too complicated for me and i feel like i'm wrong a lot of times mm -hmm. um but yeah zim i don't know if you saw what zim did but yeah they they um cut out their dividend so the stock should tank just because of that let me look they at what cut off their, they cut off their dividend for what oh they're down to 1441. uh there was yeah. some reason i don't know why exactly but they they cut it out and then eat more beans showed up and said NVDY has written at 312 and 335 net asset value will be capped at seven percent or so. That's the options that it's in. We can go to yield max and look at that. Um, and then we got more jokes. How does Scotsman find sheep into all grass? Very satisfying. Okay, take your word for it there. Uh, all right, let me pull up this. Let me see stockanalysis.com here. Stock analysis. 
got to stay away from Yahoo. <laughs> too many ads? Well, and they, they're noisy now, too. Mm -hmm. They make noise. And then it's like it waits till I scroll away, and then all of a sudden it's noise. Oh, then the audience hears it, right? Yeah, and then it's like it's it, it talks over me. It's annoying. All right, so let's look at um, – hopefully it shows – see, I do like what Yahoo says. Like Yahoo shows me what – oh, look at this. Okay, see NVIDIA here? We're up 25% in the after hours. I haven't seen a stock do that in a long time. Oh, man. So, Look hey, I, I'm saying my price before we say anything else, I'm calling four price points, uh, $313.40. Uh, now, remember, I'm not giving you guys advice. This is what I think for me. I'm trading myself as a fellow yeah. trader. $313.40, $316.95. Three seventeen fifty two and three eighteen seventeen. Those are four points for what? Four price points that it will hit. Oh, okay. I mean, by how soon? I, I don't calculate time. So when it comes to trading, we don't. Uh, if you calculate time and how long something takes, you can lose your order based on that. I wait for two key points. Once one key point enters, my robots will stagger the buys and exit okay. at those price targets. Okay. But time is, I mean, it can take 10 years. To, I don't know. I hope it doesn't take that long because it, 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 no, leverage it positions, no, leverage positions are expensive. This year. Yeah. But it should be soon. Mm -hmm. We'll see. And if it yeah. gaps, oh, my gosh. Let me see. But, yeah, NVIDIA mm -hmm. is rolling. We'll see. Oh, how did it do on his, uh, uh, earn, uh, his earnings report? Didn't it just come out? That's why the stock's up. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, obviously the street liked it. But look at this, um, and it's going to be even more so tomorrow. The PE ratio, 175, almost 176. Yeah, that's not a long-term stock. Long-term yeah. means long. Because my PE ratio is from a good under, under uh, what's it? Uh, one that's really good is under 10. One that's average is under 20, and anything over 20 is bubble territory. Mm -hmm. So a good example is like when we saw uh, Amazon at 1,200 PE, their PE ratio. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember those days. Yeah, it's it's um, usually tech stocks that seem like they get yeah. that high. But look, from like December 28th, I mean, this NVIDIA has more than doubled at this point. And wait until it opens tomorrow. I, this I, is I when... Like, this is, like, back to 2021, like, when call options, like, I was having fun with call options. Like, it was easy money at that point. Hmm. Rob oh. Smith wants to know if you own any yield max. I, I'm i pretty sure you don't. Does Andre um, own any yield max? So. Robots. You know what? Robot I was, <laughs> hey, uh, what's, the, what's the ticker on yield max? Uh, well, yield max is a family of funds. So all the ones, like, TSLY, NVDY, and APLY. We're actually trying to get the fund manager on here. Actually, let me uh, let me see if I can trade it. Yeah, because uh, you have to see. trade. You're trading outside of the U.S. That's that's part of the that's part of the thing with that. Yeah, I don't. If, how do I say it? Trading outside the U.S. has many downsides, but for our leverage, it is insane. Mm -hmm. It's much higher. Um, let's see. Oh wow! Oh, think, Panthers, so the hockey game was about to go to overtime, but the Panthers just scored. It looks like they put it away. They swept, I think I can trade these. They swept Carolina, so they're going to be in the Stanley Cup Finals. ETA. That is a funny comment, though, there, uh, Rob Smith. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, related. I'm looking at yield maxes right now. Yield max. They have a bunch of ETFs. Let me see. Yes, that's really wow. um, since I started talking about that. That's what's really catapulted my okay. views. Hey, I, I can trade all these. Yeah, I can trade all these. Tesla, oh, cool. uh, yeah. TSLY. I, I mean, if I usually at, don't. If oh, you look at my channel, like since March, since I started talking hmm. about these yield max funds, I've like doubled my audience. Let me see. 
No one I mean, it, it helped me. It helped me meet my watch hours. It helped me gain all these hmm. subscribers, all these people on here. That's all because of talking yield max for the most part. Yeah, my I was in my niche crypto and forex trading got no love right now. I tried crypto. It just didn't get. I mean, I had one video that I paid for that got like four hundred views. Mm. I've been ripped off by a lot of people on here. Um, I paid for some kind of a you know it's it's this channel automation stuff. And they yeah. keep talking about, oh, you need to be able to compete with Netflix and whatnot. No, just if you know what you're talking about, oh. just come on here and do live streams, you know. Oh, wow. I can, I can trade every single asset. Uh, O-R- O-R- oh, A-R-K. A-K. That's the other one. T-S-O-Y. So they're going to be coming out with, I'll go to the site here. They're going to be coming out with all the stocks, basically all the popular stocks. Like Meta is going to have one, Berkshire Halfway. You know what? Um, uh, how about this? Uh, video this is, just debuted. Amazon, Apple already has one. Oh, uh, give me one second. Yeah. Let me write this down. So, uh, when the market opens and for the states, I'll open these up and I'll trade these all. See how we do. Yeah. How much? I'm do you only in. Um, I'm in TSLY. That's the only one I have. Yeah. I'll start with uh, how much you think is a good starting amount for trading these? I don't really like know. Like a thousand, maybe. A thousand. Okay. Yeah. I I'll actually see put how a lot. I do. I put a lot in TSL. Why I probably put too much? Mm, maybe like 10k for all, all together. Yeah, 2500 each should be fine. Give me a second. That's a good idea, actually, for the four of them. Yeah, there's 2500 dollars each. Dung Nguyen joined. Long time no see. How much higher will Nvidia go? Oh well, we're back to like 2021 at this point. Back to when it last split, and. I knew it would do that too. Like I, I did a presentation on Nvidia in my class last year. I, I knew mm. it would get back. I just the way the market was so choppy and stuff. I went ahead and sold it too soon. Still made eighty mm. percent, but could have done a lot better. Could have been a really blockbuster trade. Mm. Anyway, so here's the yield max site. So these are the basically. Yeah, we got only, the only two one. of them have started paying dividends so far. So the OARK, the Kathy Wood Fund, twenty seven point eight one percent. TSLY is down to 36.26%. That one will be coming out with our next dividend next month. Apple oh. hasn't paid a dividend yet, but it'll be coming probably next month. NVDY, Why? probably July. And then Amazon, the AMZY is the next one. Um, kind of warming up in the in the bullpen there uh, to, to you know be the next fund that debuts. There's, there's no way. I mean, looking at, like, I can't open up O-R-A-K right now. But TSLY. You can't open up O-A-R-K? on my trading screen like i'm looking at the stock right now this is undividendable that makes sense undividendable yeah it's like it just breaks every rule for owning the dividend it, this oh, is a trading t- stock. tell us that that's actually good that you're picking up yeah. on that so explain that yeah. so why well it's not really dividends it's covered calls yeah i mean even i mean the only the only way i would get into this is by mm. levered there let me just i hate talking and not showing give me a second that's okay. Um, a lot of this audience here now is likes these funds. So, um, yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah, Dung Nguyen, a... you're a little late to the party here. We were just talking about NVIDIA. It's up like $75. Uh, yeah, uh, and, are you able to change the screen? My call options in it. Huh? You mind changing the screen, sir? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, you want to pull I... up something? Yeah, I already have it available. Oh, here, here, here. Yeah, I don't have that superpower. <laughs> yeah, superpower. Okay. So this is TSLA, right? Mm-hmm. Like Tesla with these, there's no way like with this amount of volatility, like the only the, there's no long term trading strategy. The only way would be in, would be very short term scalping. Like that's the way I would have uh, every robot running with this. Mm-hmm. Because like if you it's even look scalping. at the gaps. Like if I start running my gap trader on here to show what the probability is or the gaps or from high to low, uh-huh. we can start seeing like as a call option trader, you'd be like this. All right. When can I enter? How long can I hold a trade? But looking at Tesla, holding a long term option is not a good idea so far. Unless they get back up to those previous highs. Look at that. Tesla had a gap of near eight dollars and it filled when so tesla's the last... gonna come back once we once we get everyone on electric cars tesla will come back 
I mean, I, I don't know about the electric car thing. I just when I look at the who who influences the price, who owns the majority of this. Like we would have to look at the insiders, see how how. They yeah, can you see it. that on here. I, I looked that on yet like Yahoo, uh, the insiders. Give me a second, and we're right. Here. Look at these gaps. Like I I, mean, I love looking at stocks. You guys then like looking at stocks to me is like how easy it is because like I trade forex mainly, but stock pairs are so manipulated that you can enter and exit on a lot of these pairs. And if you have a large enough balance. Like if you, if you have a large enough balance, like over fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars, you can out outlast a lot of these opens and closes. So, so for me, if I entered a very small lot size or contract size, I can withstand these big gaps. It's pretty. Are easy. you talking like pair trading? Uh, it's just uh, I give you an example. You see this right? See this big gap right here? Yeah. In Tesla. Uh huh. Right here, this big gap. Yeah. It, it amounts to about eleven dollars. Mm-hmm. So somebody had enough pull to push this down eleven dollars without anyone t telling them. So for me, if I entered what day right was here, that? was that the day that earnings came out? I think that this was is, April uh, 20? 2020. Yeah, four twenty. Four twenty. So on four twenty, it took only. So remember, this is a leverage account, leverage, mm -hmm. not individuals. If you buy one to one, you're cool, make eleven bucks. But for me, it would have taken 30 minutes. So 286 candles at 30 minutes. Where's my old school calculator? That's right? a lot of candles. No, I only on a 30 minute candle. Uh, oh. Where's my old? Give me a second. Uh, 30 times 286. Uh, 30 times 286. So 8,530 divided by 60. So 143 About hours. Divided by so 60. It's six, it's six days. So yeah. six days. So if you hold that trade for six days on a leverage position, you could have made a good chunk of money. What did it go up from there to there? What's what's the triangle? The triangle is, a, is an arrow showing the gap. My bad. Oh, okay. So usually with stocks, if you trade stocks, if you have time, guys, go through all the charts, and I will bet you the majority of time, every time it makes a, a large gap, it always fills. Not always, but typically fills. If you have now, this is difficult for a manual trader. This is why I stopped manually trading to analyze these gaps to see if they have enough momentum to fill. Mm -hmm. If you can measure it every single time, typically they fill within a week or a few days. And it took uh, Tesla 5.9 days to fill. But how long can you keep the order open though? That's why I said it is not a, it's not for small account balances. If you had fifty thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars in the account, you can handle these price movements. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why I tell like I don't trade like everyone else because I trade normally how big entities enter. Because as the only way that I see this profitable is copying how they trade. Yeah, this that's kind of over I, my head. I'm more of a, I'm like um, Rob Smith. I'm more of a just a buy and hold. Oh, I, I do the same thing. I mean, I, I was talking about some dividends earlier today. Mm -hmm. If you want to go, we can get we can get off trading and just do dividends. I love. I mean, no, no, I like what you're saying. You're. Get in, get more into how because uh, you think these dividends aren't sustainable with this because you were starting yeah, to say it doesn't pass get, your dividend test. Yeah, if you look at the <clears throat> look at dividends in general, it, the, the first question is why are they giving a dividend? So if Tesla is it like their current yield on this option, thirty day SEC yield is what four point one four. Let's see. Uh, for for what? T S L Y for your yield. No, I mean it. It claims right. the site claims like thirty six percent, but it was seventy five percent at one point. Oh, look who showed up! Big Lance Holy is back. Crap. Best growth, high yield stock or ETF to keep long term. So, I like SVOL, but some people have other ideas on that one. And he's back for the humor. Yeah, we're trying to insert some humor here. Uh, you missed some at the beginning. We had some jokes and whatnot. What? If you look at this, like the the question would be this: Does the volatility outperform? Divid, the dividend yield and for tesla this say this say tesla gave a 10 percent dividend right just say hypothetically speaking mm -hmm. would that be more would that be would that outperform the volatility that is currently having heck no this thing is extremely volatile so it would all it would automatically break my rule for getting into it as a dividend stock because a, a highly volatile stock typically means that bigger players are moving the prices and they don't care about the dividend Mm -hmm. 
If you want a company that cares about dividends, look at Pepsi. Pepsi is a very good company for dividends because they consistently pay over what, near 50 years now? If you want a dividend growth stock, I would look at that. But a dividend volatile stock typically means manipulation. Mm -hmm. And if you and how remember the perspective of a retail trader is the opposite of a banker. Bankers think of you as liquidity and as easy cash. So if they know that you guys are going for the easy dividend stocks, dividend payout, they're going like this. Okay, we're going to smash the price right after the ex dividend date. So every if you've noticed on certain volatile dividend stocks, the ex dividend date once it's accomplished hits that uh, uh, gets into the stock, the price drops. And you're like, what's going on? I got a I got a three percent dividend or two percent dividend or whatever amount, but the price dropped five percent. This is done intentionally to knock out retail traders because they know the liquidity pools are at and they'll keep basically kicking you guys out of the trade. Mm -hmm. That's why for me, I, I only go for dividend. Like my current dividend stocks right now are only energy companies. So I believe that energy like crude oil, I'll bring up crude oil while I'm talking. I, my, my robots are trading crude oil saying crude oil is going to go a whole lot higher. And that's what I, I actually, I kind of want that at the same time. And what do they uh, determine that from? Oh, oh, damn it. So crude oil can be determined, one, from COT contracts. Uh, COT contracts means commitment of traders. Uh, actually, I hate talking about something without showing you guys. I'm not a fan of that at all. And usually people call BS on things like that. Uh, yeah. Basically, guys, commitment of traders shows you where the money's at. Okay, so we do COT reports and we go to barchart.com. So... Uh, basically, it shows you where all the big traders are. I'm going to look at crude oil. And you can see where all the institutional money, all the big banks are at. Because remember, their positions are so large, they have to report these. And when they report them, like this on CO2 reports, we can tell where the big money's at. So we're looking at crude oil real quick right here. And if you guys trade crude oil, compare it to this like in a dividend perspective. If I think that crude oil is going to go up, gas prices are going to go up, there's a good possibility that energy uh, energy stocks, energy ETFs, ETNs are possibly going to go higher. Well, by the that's how I plan out my stocks. Like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, man, I'm happy you brought that up. Election, uh, the, the election is very uh, manipulated when it comes to uh, uh, commodity prices. They almost drain the strategic reserve for the midterm. So here we go. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, where am I at? Three year. Let's go to. I think energy prices are driving a lot of inflation too. Yeah, they definitely. I mean, but this, how I say it, oil prices are, if, this is once again, a personal belief. Oil today is high, been highly manipulated by our current government and they are mm -hmm. dragging the prices to where they make people feel that they, how do I say this without pissing people off? If, if you had control over oil prices, if you wanted the people to think that things are getting better, you will lower it. And after an election cycle, you will go back to normally. So they claim that prices go down three or 4%. Hey guys, prices are down. Vote for me in a sense. Mm. But in a sense, they're just doing it just to uh, collect your vote. But. So basically, if you run for office, raise inflation by like 10%, bring it down to 5% and say you cut Correct. it in half. Yeah. 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 I, I love when I do that for job numbers. I love that. When yeah. President Biden like, hey, I created X amount of jobs. I'm like, what? By the way, um, I don't think the job market's as good as they're saying. Just looking at oh. real situations going on, because I know a lot of people right now that, that can't get jobs, that have like master's degrees uh, and really good loading. qualifications and stuff. Here, let's look at the job numbers real quick. While oh, they haven't. It's below 4%. It's still, they've got it like, it's like 3.8% <laughs> or something. But oh. just the real situation on the ground, it, it says differently. Oh. I mean, a, a lot of these big companies, um, they're just yeah. like, like I know people that have interviewed for like, that have applied for like 50 jobs and are not getting work. So, you know. Oh, actually, um, uh, happy you brought that up. I got the charts for this. Uh, well, I think they're loading right now. So let's look at the interest, not interest rates. My bad. Macroeconomic uh, data. National debt. Oh, not that. Yeah, oh, so for people like me, I, I, when I, 
Yeah, I, I, I look at this information so often to a point where like I can pull all the rates of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see all these hot tabs. Like I literally have a tab for every website that I, that I, that I, that I pull data from. Because I read this right. stuff. What, um, what internet browser do you use? It's just crazy. I use uh, my favorite one is Vivaldi. Um, secondary would be Brave, Firefox. But when I use, yeah, when I use YouTube videos, when I do uh, videos like this, I I'll, I only use Chrome because I have all the hotkeys ready. So yeah. when you're saying, hey, Chrome Andre, or saying, hey, um, look at these numbers. So here's a. Oh, are you here's a claim. I like initial jobless claim historical chart. Pull up a different screen. Oh, is it? Cause you're still on the same one actually i don't understand oh oh uh, give me a second guys my bad i click application and not, not screen oh sometimes i do that look at me like i think my, i'm showing a screen and then i'm on the completely wrong screen give me one second sir i have it already here so that's, a, that's like a big thing. I don't like talking about something if I can show the audience evidence. Right. We lost some audience. We got into these boring so uh, the, the, jobs numbers and stuff like that. Oh, I, like, uh, I hear you. I sent it to you. I hope that oh, I don't be considered boring. But I'll tell you, if you want to be a good trader, if you want to be a good trader, it is helpful to know these numbers. Oh, so for sure. Here's the uh, initial jobless Forex, claims. You know, Forex Factory, that site that I show. Yeah, I have it right here. They have all the yeah. macro. You can Forest Factory is my favorite website. Mm -hmm. and, and what is really good, they make this robot, this, this, this whole website's programmable. So I have every robot pull data from here. Mm -hmm. Especially on like first of the month. Uh, sure it is. If you guys don't know, first Fridays, first first Fridays are pretty mm -hmm. much the most volatile day of the month. Yeah, let's look at this. Like yep. FMOC minutes. I Anything would check these out if you guys are... Yeah, U.S. dollar yeah. in red, major market mover. Yeah, that's. And if it, and what I do find, when I find it interesting, if there's a red marker and the markets don't move, that's always interesting. You're like, hmm, someone's playing games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So here's our U.S. national unemployment rate, guys. Here's all this uh, interesting entertainment, basically. Our last uh, recession was like one month. So if you believe that in the government statistics, here you are. That's it. This massive mm -hmm. spike. Like the way that we re the way that we report these numbers to me is so. It should be to me. This is a straight manipulation. Like they think that it recovered back in a few months. Really. Just what like are we that. down to? Um, is this updated? Yeah, this is from the last quarter. Last quarter is 3.4% as of April 2023. Really? Yeah. If I you guys believe up. that, I don't. There's no way. You know what's happened? Um, they pumped too much money into the economy, and it's caused un un unemployment. Actually, according to those numbers, 4% is considered like a healthy unemployment number. It's too low, actually, but you guys, I don't believe the numbers because, like I said, I, I know several people that are having trouble finding work hmm. with good qualifications, so, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of my clients also has a double bachelor's in programming, can't find a job, and he can really? find jobs. He, like, he, I'm saying the, the problem is that people can find a job, but it is at a very low payment. So they have right. to get like two or three. three point four, holy crap. Three point four. I've never seen it that low. Yeah, because it helps out for the elect. <laughs> so I'm not, I, okay, I was, this is once again, it's a personal preference. I mean, personal yeah. belief. I can't tell you guys what to do, but I guarantee you unemployment is going to skyrocket right after the election. Oh, it might. It is, but I've never seen, in my lifetime, it's never been that low, 3.4%. I think I got to yeah. vote for Biden now. That, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a second there. Oh, man, my soul came out like, <laughs> uh, we have a uh, so <laughs> here's, uh, here's national that. debt by uh, national debt by uh, president. So uh, so far, uh, President uh, Joe Biden up twelve percent. Donald Trump was uh, forty percent. We got the, the best, most the biggest, loved president. He has, the, he has like the biggest jump. Is that him? 
no, no. Barack Obama won. Yeah. George Bush beat him. Yeah, but uh, I wish they uh, calculated a little bit differently because uh, if mm-hmm. you guys do not know, the way these numbers are calculated, this is only on budget items, on the national the, the national debt that's currently measured off budget items are not ca- calculated in the national debt. Mm-hmm. So if you, I'll show you what I'm talking about, guys, because I don't like talking about things not showing you. We type into Google and type in uh, debt calculator. I'm sorry, uh, U.S. debt calculator. U.S. debt calc. There you go. Not calculator. It's clock. My bad. <laughs> uh, same thing, right? So the U.S. debt clock shows doesn't show everything on here. It it it, it removes a lot of off balance sheet stuff. You know what he's going to say? Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get political here or anything, but if this holds, it's this going to be a big topic next year. He's going to say unemployment's lower under me than it was under Trump. And actually, yeah. under Trump, it was like 3.6% at this at its lowest point. So, I mean, if you believe these numbers, oh, that, that would oh, be right. And if you listen to what President Trump says, he says this uh, uh, specifically, the unemployment for black individuals and how they categorize race like that is the lowest it has ever been. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. For each about. group. Yeah, for each yeah. group, it was like the lowest that it had ever been. Cyclically, it's always been higher among mm. minority groups, but it was lower under him than it ever was. See, unemployment for men and women. And for me, I'm not a fan of how they uh, group race. It's actually like a, a good way to piss me off. Like, I hate when people yeah. are like, hey, you're black, you're here in this category. How do you, mm-hmm. I, I don't put that on any document. I put American. Mm-hmm. So how, yeah, where am I categorized? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, all right. So here we go. This is a. Uh, you know, this makes no sense ooh, at all. I mean, Here's because we keep black. raising interest rates, but the job market is supposedly the jobs mm-hmm. are getting better. This makes no sense at all. Yeah, I, I wish, like, uh, when you look at the job reports when they come out, you know, when. Uh, uh, John Pierre talks about the job reports uh, for the White House press uh, secretary talks about it. Oh, I wish KJP. anyone would just go through and just say, oh, go ahead. Yeah, when she yeah, says, KJP, like, hey, press, press secretary. When you ask her, like, I wish I was a reporter, they'd be like, hey, what jobs exactly? You said there's 100,000, a million jobs created. What jobs exactly? Are these government jobs from the IRS? Is that the majority of them? Probably. <laughs> Government jobs are no net benefit on the economy. They're a net negative. Mm-hmm. Just, and I mean, look at this. Like yeah. even here, they, our recession here was one month, maybe two months. How does that even make sense? I um, like, I'm going to go on a limb here, and yeah. I'm I'm going to say, um, and I, I I'm not somebody that questions data or anything like that, but <laughs> I don't believe these numbers. I'm going to say it because yeah. have you seen all the layoffs that are happening with these big companies and recruiters, oh, yeah, yeah, are, really- saying, recruiters are saying that it's basically it's a, it, the company, you know how you, they say in real estate, it's the buyer's market mm-hmm. or the seller's market. Well, the job market, from what they're telling people that are applying, it's the company's market. Basically the company can pick. It's not the worker's market. That doesn't jive with a 3.4% unemployment rate. And the Fed has raised interest rates this high. Actually, let's so, bring it up. Let's bring up the Fed stuff. These right numbers here. just don't make any sense, honestly. Um, Damon Wright else says dead cat bounce. Yeah, I like that dead cat bounce thing. I mean, like, oh, we can. Yeah. Library. No, these numbers just don't make any but sense. Within the federal funds rate? Uh-huh. Uh, I would say the main reason because they change the definitions. They keep changing the definition right. to read ca- to, to up. We change definitions. Buff the numbers yeah. like mm-hmm. what, what, like when they take can, out uh, when they take out uh, all right. How can unemployment possibly people. be lower now than it was before we started raising interest rates? <laughs> I mean, we were coming back from oh, COVID like, from that little COVID recession. <laughs> like you see that small stick there. That was a recession. I guess but, let, me, let me get rid of these a little bit. Like, but it just, I don't know, it just officially doesn't make sense. Like, if if we took the real numbers, like from the 1980s, and compare them to today, 
you'll see that these charts are relatively higher. And mm -hmm. then what I don't like is how they said the like this the federal funds rate on here says during our time was near zero. But if you measured inflation, we were looking at negative. Like actual like oh man, this, this these numbers actually make like we're currently at five point zero eight percent the last reported, but we should I mean, the only way for these people to correct it would be going to 30 or 40 percent. Well, and they're saying inflation is coming down. Like, what are we at now, supposedly? Oh, the CPI? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. CPI. Because I noticed, so, like, I've been looking, um, like, eggs have come back down. Like, you know, milk has come back down to reasonable prices. But some restaurants mm -hmm. around me, like, it's double. The cost is double yeah. what it used to be. Eggs, it's literally double. Oh, here. Let me uh, show you guys. Uh, let's do something that everyone knows, AAA gas prices. Mm -hmm. So typically, gas controls everything. Gas goes up. Eggs will go up. All this, you know, things will go up. And right now, we gas crazy, is... The egg thing. Oh, what's that? Is that in... Um, where's that at? National average? Right now, national average... For you people who live in California, which I have no idea why you would live there. Hey, a lot of the audience does. <laughs> it's I good don't know why money. you would. Yeah. yeah, if you have money, if you're like a uh, Silicon Valley guy or. Mm -hmm. like, look at this. The state is relatively high across the board. What's interesting mm. is the highest. I would think L.A. would be the highest, which is down here. Yeah. But actually the middle of the state even like san francisco is not i would think those areas would be higher but it's the middle of the state that's higher hey, where that doesn't make any like? sense why why I, I wonder why like the big cities aren't the highest what is diesel's at six dollars that's crazy Dang. well when i was in vegas uh it's like gas is like 450 out there yeah. you're close to what california is close mm -hmm. but we got something that they don't got we don't got state taxes. That's true. You're and, one uh, of like five states. Florida is the same. And also one thing about uh, California that I did not like, uh, after studying these prices, I learned that, and I can show you guys if you guys want to fact check me, about 40%. It's just, 40%, one, thing, just one thing you didn't like? Oh, I mean, I'm just talking about this gas right here. Oh. Just, this is <laughs> gas price. Uh, about 40% of every gallon that you pay when it comes to uh, California's gas is government Tax. uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. I, I was so surprised about that because I'm like, why would why would 40 percent? And I'm like, when you start breaking down where all the cost is going, 40 percent ends into the government's pocket. Another thing, every time gas goes up or every time it drops, they add more gas tax, like at the federal level. So every time there's a big run up in gas, it always goes up. It's always higher than it was before. I you know, it's funny. Before I had the audience I have now, I used to actually put more effort into my videos. It's mm. funny, when I would get less audience or no audience, I'd put all this effort in. Oh, you can go by state now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah California debt cool. clock, population, unemployment. There's no way. I, how much is a working class? Like, I would like to see the percentage of the working class, like how many adults from, let's say, like ages. Of, yeah. 18 to maybe let's say 55 mm -hmm. mid 50s see how much of them versus this number because like jet to gdp uh, ratio 15 uh, percent debt per citizen 14k oh the revenue is oh look at that look at that. look at the revenue and look at their spending uh, let me yeah. make it bigger for the audience well they had a surplus i mean supposedly they had a surplus but i guess they're squandering that yeah, I mean, maybe it's all this reparation money they're giving away. Is that already <laughs> is that already happening? They're giving a, a, a people. How do I say this? People of a certain community are getting money that's mm -hmm. not a typical, not by race. <laughs> is it how you identify though? Correct. If you identify okay. so you there. Can ident you can identify and get it. Maybe. I would say that this is a. Does, uh, California has their own way. You know, you guys do you. <laughs> yeah, but Newsom's going to run for president. Ah! Oh, yeah. my God, my soul. Hey, um, Rob Smith, are you still on? Is Would Newsom make a good president? He's your governor. What do you think? 
Mm-hmm. Oh, Damon Rydell lives in California. He actually lives near my cousin. She's in like the Redding area. He so he said California has sixty three cent per gallon state tax. That 63? sounds about right. Sixty three cents per gallon. Let me see. That sounds about right. And he's up in the northern part of the state. Is that like Humboldt County or like Shasta County? I think my cousin's in one of those. Holy crap! In some areas, how much is the tax would be on diesel? Because it's probably not the same. I think it would be the same. I think it's basically all fuel. I think it's the same. How can they? Who? If I was like, if I really cared about California and I was in that state, like I would love to talk to some of these politicians. Oh, like, listen, County, yeah. How do you guys get away with this? Well, it's not the people; it's the government. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm talking Like the government, like I, I would like to go to their like town halls, but like, listen, how are you guys getting away with this stuff? Oh, they'll throw you out. They'll they'll throw yeah. you in with the you know the others. And the, yeah, yeah, you ask any good questions of like, hey, isn't it weird that your board is being paid by like Mr. Soros? No, there's some good counties in California. You know, uh, I, what's the whole thing going on with the? Um, you don't hear much about it anymore, but a couple of those counties have banned certain like voting machines and whatnot. Oh, like northern thing. northern California. I wish. Uh, how do I say this? Voting to me is a big thing, so uh, I don't want yeah. to get super. Uh, all I okay. Here, let me show, can, I, can I show something? I don't want to say it. I just want to show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're gonna show. I know what you're gonna show. Yeah. Vote early and often. Right? I don't. I don't want to say it because I, I know something bad can happen on his channel. This is not my channel, so on my channel, I'll say it all day. So it's not a no, that's okay. But a picture paints a thousand words, you know, like they say. Where the heck is it at? I know what oh. you're gonna show though. I, I want that on a shirt, actually. Your channel. Yeah, one yes, second. Right. I just put exactly I, what I, it was. Here, it was my community post. Now remember, yeah, I am extremely political, guys. I talk about politics all the time. It's, I can't find, I can't make a video about like money without talking about politics. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is one thing. If you oh, guys I saw that, remember, yeah, remember, the house, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. If you guys have time, research about uh, p- housing. So back in the day, before the Federal Reserve really messed up the dollar, people used to buy houses in cash or fifty percent down and paid off within two to three years mm-hmm. a full house. And they're the same houses that we have today. I'll say very arguably they're very similar. And it's just that their purchasing power was significantly better than ours today. Ours mm-hmm. has like oh, ours has like nothing on us. Oh, scroll up. Oh, was that jobs created by president? What was that? Scroll up. Oh, give me a second. Uh, I already clicked on this one. Oh, someone else joined Jen. I haven't seen you in in weeks. It seems like it's been so long. But thanks for showing back up. I noticed the same thing because um, I, I go there. I have family and friends there. Um, actually, where my cousin was, what was the big fire? I know it's hard to narrow it down to one, but um, oh, there's there you go. see there. Um, Jobs created by president. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember because the nicest road I ever saw in California. I actually thought I was back okay. home because they do pave roads here in see? Florida. They always make Donald Trump look bad to Biden. See, like, Biden is oh, better yeah. than every Best other president. Creator. But that's counting all the COVID jobs, like all the jobs that were lost during COVID. Mm-hmm. Which was not his fault. It was by the state. The state shut. Ugh, never mind. Dumbest thing I we ever wanna... did. Yeah. I, I never want it. Uh, so once again, guys, I, I tell you, I'm highly pol- political. I talk about politics all the time just because I think politics and trading are hand in hand. Oh, they are. Yeah. But the dumbest thing, the lockdown was the dumbest thing ever. I mean, you look at where we are now and like the costs, the inflation and everything, like, yeah, it's just uh, the dumbest thing we ever did. I would say it was a good idea for the people who control certain uh, markets. What the heck well, is that? the market, the market did great. I just, I, I wish I was, I wish I had more money on the sidelines at the time. I would have invested a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I, the main thing that I bought was crude oil. Crude oil is one of my best trades. When, she asked, when, when I does saw, the yield max come out? Um, we don't know yet uh, for Berkshire Hathaway. Um, probably, I think Amazon's going to come before. Berkshire Hathaway. Oh, Varden showed up. Haven't seen you in a while either. Everybody's showing back up. It's good to see. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Loom Jensen has been working in Cali. See, I have a lot of California people on here. Why? But anyway, no, they're they're good. I, there's a lot of good people in California. It's just the government's a little, little wacky. 
Oh, all right. For the guys in California, I got a question for you. If Larry Elder became the governor, you think it would have been better? Oh, a lot of them will probably say yes, but Newsom won in a landslide. Yeah. You, do you ever see that? down the five. Like, if you go down, the, the five basically runs the whole, down the span of the whole state. Mm -hmm. And there was just all these anti-Newsom signs all down the five, you know, have that you, year. Have you, have you seen that uh, Gavin Newsom voting chart? I no, compare pull it up. It's, That's what I thought you were gonna. Pull, I thought you were gonna pull up. Yeah. You know the F. <laughs> yeah. Pull up. Yeah. I, I thought I posted that all my thing, but uh, yeah. Uh, here, I'll bring it up right here because I don't want you to say it. And well, yeah. Hey, it's, it's one of those things. My last you know video you know. got. My my last video I posted about that. It got uh, deleted by YouTube. Really. Yeah, well, it's just I mean, one of those things. If you know, you know. All it is is just a, a it, it, it's just a letter. That's all. The letter F. <laughs> it could stand for fantastic. You know, like the jo the good job that uh, Biden's doing creating jobs. You know. Oh my God! Every time you say that, it's like, oh my, <laughs> how is it possible? No, if they I, ask, I that's what it is. It's the F is for the fantastic jobs oh, yeah. we have that are totally this, yeah. That so are, here's that are, uh, Trump is the red yeah. and. Here's uh, our current president. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I remember. Woo! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 3 a.m. After vote, after it's, oh, my God. Yep. Uh, but if you saw yeah. Gavin Newsom's, here, I'll show you Gavin Newsom's one. Is it similar? It's not Works. just similar. It makes, it's it's all mail-in voting. Yeah. And when people watching, how do I say it? If you have time, guys, look at, look at the camera system for a lot of the mail-in voting areas in california during that election that's mm -hmm. like the only way i want to put it at i don't want to say weird well, there was a movie um i don't i don't want to say too much i'm getting into more than i normally do but there was a documentary put out yeah. and it's actually government cameras and they have like you see 20 or 30 votes going in one person like picks up the votes which it, it's legal in some states they call it ballot harvesting and it's actually legal you know so i'm not questioning it but you see, like one person putting in like thirty votes, you know. It's called a thousand mules. Sure. It is, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, it's a good right. movie. I would definitely watch it, guys. Yeah. Ah, and... oh, man, I wish I could say stuff like that, but <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna say it. it's not. It's not a good thing. But that I'm letter, F, just to clarify, that letter F that we put up, that was just. That's our rating of the current jobs numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. F for fantastic, right? Oh, we got the whole gang back. Look, Jose Guzman showed up. We were just talking about your state, your uh, great state of California. See, Canadi I told you Canadians are smart. No voting machines. It should be like yeah. all paper, paper ballots. Uh -oh. I mean, <laughs> look at this. If bite me one with 81 million votes, why aren't more people wearing Biden hats? I know. Uh, I've never seen it. What would they call it? The silent majority? I never I, hear anyone. Oh, you're going to really get me going now. I, I never hear anybody uh, that's like gung ho that, oh, Biden's here. doing so great and whatnot. Have Do you, you ever? Like, I never hear I, anybody say they love Biden. Here. Have you guys seen uh, uh, prior to the election, any type of rally for Biden was like empty? They had the circles with like yeah. one person could stand in the circle. Yeah. And that was it. I don't. I just. He was in the basement the entire time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Join Jen said it, not me. I'll post the comment, but, uh, yeah. Who's <laughs> it? Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I, um, that's that's definitely an interesting, you know, interesting take for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching on my TV, couldn't type. Oh, well, good. You were watching at least. Let me see. Gas prices. Uh, let me see. Oh, man, I'm so off right now. Oh, my gosh. I was supposed to be showing this right here, the bank failures. Yeah, my whole family's watching the show, but I'm the only one paying attention. My kids are six and three. Oh, I thought your whole—I thought everybody was just watching this. I've had some people on here tell me that they cut out their TV mm -hmm. time to watch this. Yeah, guys, get on. Throw those super chats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. What's well, actually, funny? I will say this. Um, oh, you guys are really—you guys are really pushing my buttons here. Um, I'm saying more than I normally would, but. Basically, um, before that last election, like, there's clips of, like, Kamala Harris and, like, pretty much every Democrat talking about how elections are, um, can be, 
can be rigged. And after 2020, complete silence. It's like, oh, no, that never happens, you know. As, uh, actually, as a counter to this argument, if wow. you guys want to know, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, a counter to this, this, this happened during the Gore and President Bush uh, scenario, but into the Republicans' favor. Yeah, um, I was going to say it's it, well, the, you know, both sides. It's kind of happened to both sides. Um, Jose mm. Guzman is very observant. You, you uh, figured out I was eating pizza there. That wasn't supposed to be known, but I was. It was right in front of the camera. Right. <laughs> Very observant. I have a very observant audience. Pizza. How much gifts why dividend will be if the price stays the same today on Tesla? Um, Tesla real quick. I know the audience is trying to get us back on track here. We're having too much fun. Um, oh, yeah. Tesla, T-S-L-Y. How did Tesla do today? Oh, DeSantis announced. Do you see Elon Musk had DeSantis yeah, on I Twitter? Yeah, that's what I'm actually making my video on today. I'm posting uh, videos on. Where's my to do list? Now? You'll like this Fire one. This will be another, so here's my uh, to do Look, if you know, you know. Can what you see it? this? I'm making a video about. What was it? What was it? If I? you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll see. I mean, yeah. I, I will. How to say? I like. I like that he would be a good president, but I have a good feeling he won't win. Because I feel like he has no charisma. Would, the whole thing with Disney just it went too far, you know, and now Disney's fighting back and they may end up like losing jobs here in the state. I mean, I'm not saying mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I kind of understand some of where he was coming from, but it just, the whole thing's just gone too far, you know? I mean, Disney is kind of like a protected government agent in Florida. You guys got... <laughs> Oh, look at this, Jose Guzman remembered one of the last live streams. You had to cut it short. He was asking. He says, how's the how's the family? Oh, That's cool. they're, they're not here right now. You should try to do live streams and YouTube with everyone out of the way. Yeah. Because usually, like, like even me bothers because I got four videos to shoot after, his, after this, and then I got to hit the gym. Let's see. Oh, you're on Vegas time. Is your gym 24 hours? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Hours. Yeah, mine closes. That's why I have to go early. Mine. Well, I'm at two gyms, but one's 24 hours, but it's too far of a walk for me. Yeah. I mean, do they try to increase your guys' gym membership price? Um. Well, I'm locked in. Um. I go. Do you have LA's Fitness? LA Fitness out there in in Vegas? Oh, uh, LVAC. I go. Um. I've been locked in for like five years at the same price, and then there's these new ones called EOS Fitness that are popping up, and it's like ten bucks a month. So I'm at two gyms, but the EOS is too far of a walk for me, so I don't really go. Um, Actually, let me just bring this up on here. Oh, she said politicians are all actors playing their role. That's why the debt ceiling it's going to get raised because it's it's a charade, really. And I'm surprised how few people remember. Like I remember this from the Obama days. It was the same same shit basically. It's it's a charade. Obizi is the best, man. Obese. Which one? Oh, President Obama is my one of my. Obizi. My oh, President Obama is my one of my favorite worst presidents. He's he's way worse than Biden. Biden, know, you know, know he's know a stunt. We didn't have inflation under Obama, at least. I I think that. Oh, I I would a, rather have. Well, here's the thing with Obama, you had like ten percent unemployment but low inflation, so it's like pick your poison. He uh, let's say this: President Obama bailed out all the companies. His, uh, if you if you have if this, I'll just say this: if you have time, look at President Bi uh, President uh, Obama's net worth during his presidency, right after the bailouts for the banks. Just check. Oh, that, that out. happens every every politician. Yeah. I think the only one, like every politician, leaves office with way more money than they came in, came in with, mm. except like for Trump, I think. And I'm I'm not saying that to defend him, but it's just it's an interesting fact. Yeah. Um, like, wow, I have an observant audience. Wow. Um, very, uh, very good point there. You see that point? Oh, DeSantis is a Navy intelligence. Yeah. And, yeah. We're becoming like I mean, a, we're going down the rabbit holes here. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to the rabbit hole. I mean, I don't know what type of pool he has. I don't, what, what, what did he do in the Navy? I don't know. I, he was like a JAG officer or something. Um, and he went to Harvard, I think. I mean, he's been, he's been a good governor, but he's just, um, He's just kind of like, I don't know, since since the last election, he's just taken things too far, I think. Tesla dividend, I think. Um, oh, what's with the Tesla? <laughs> I think oh, um, I've, got a, I've got a good audience here. 
Um, well, well, Tesla dividend. Tesla's T-S-L-A? I, you might be right. I'm hoping it does get back to 90 cents. But um, Jose Guzman disagrees. Oh, uh, Gene Mancuso. I think I've seen you comment, but this is the first time I've actually seen you on here. Well, welcome to the live stream. Love the content and casualness of the program. Of course, that's what we do on here, you know. Very casual, uh, teleprompter-free, um, unscripted. Went up nearly 40 bucks. You see, um, you see join so Jen's comment there. All right, give me one second, guys. I'm going to break down. Uh, if you guys want my analysis on it, if you guys want, but mm -hmm. how I would trade Tesla right now. Give me a second. Oh, um, <clears throat> one thing Rob Smith says, and I agree with. So, you know, Elon had the whole sideshow with buying Twitter and whatnot. And um, basically, it, it distracted him from uh, focusing more on Tesla. So now that that's all out of the way, and I think it was a good thing, like for free speech and whatnot. It was a good thing that he took over Twitter, but he kind of can be a jerk too, you know. Um, yeah. Especially like on the work from home stuff. But like, so now that the whole Twitter thing is over, and he's more focused again on Tesla because he dumped a lot of his net worth into Twitter. Um, but you look at that and like the models that are coming out with Tesla. I think Tesla still has a bright future. When it comes to, uh, there's a video about Elon. Elon and the Federal Reserve is actually an interesting combination. You guys can't, let me say, Elon and the Federal Reserve, how much mm -hmm. basically debt money is he getting? How much is he, how leverage is he propped up? Oh, I don't know. I got to read this comment real quick, though. He says, I'm telling you guys, the town of Edwillen Pines, California, did I say that right? That's a town I've never heard of. Had a dog as a mayor for nine years. That goes to show how much we need rulers. Did he win by like mail in votes or something? Did they I mail him like dog treats? <laughs> That's funny. That there was a dead person that won. There was actually a Senate race. If you look it up, I think in the year 2000, there was a Senate race and like a dead person actually won. It's crazy. I got, I mean, I, I hate, I wish I can say how I feel about, uh, or I'm going to feel how I think about voting because I'm a very big proponent of re reducing voting across the board. Well, not so much reducing it, but like um, just paper ballots. It. Paper no, ballots. No, no, I mean, you know, like show up to a polling place, vote in person. Yeah, you guys know who is, uh, you guys know this guy named Thomas Sowell? Yes. So yeah. if you have time, he has, a, he has a couple books that I've personally read and they talk about voting. If you go before, if you go to voting before 1900s and why I bring this up, voting came with responsibility. Today, voting comes with age. Which one do you think had a very, had a more qualified voter age or requirements Responsi responsibility re requirements but a lot of i i get what you're saying but a lot of yeah. people would, would take that argument apart because they'd say that like jose says you do what because you know that you would say <laughs> going back in history you know different groups didn't have the right to vote and whatnot yeah so, that's fine that's yeah. fine though and and because i'd still be like the past is a good way to see where there, there's some good and some bad and for me, when I see, when I hear that, like, for example, you hear people like, like, uh, what's her name? Nancy Pelosi wants to make voting in California at age 16. Do you think oh, you yeah. have a more, you want to make, because that argument just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. 16, 15, 14, 13, you just keep going. Just vote right out of the womb. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, uh, what is it? There is one state that passed that uh, uh, non non residents can vote in their elections. And there's uh, state elections. Um, I forgot. It was on one of the channels I was following. Oh, um, New York or D.C.? Well, D.C. is not a state, but. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much are. Basically, that's like an, that's like an open secret anyway. I think that non-citizens vote in certain states. That's like an open secret anyway. I mean, this is what. Uh, this is how immigration it has. Like, I, I, oh, actually, have you guys seen the video that just came out like two days ago where the U.S. Army is opening up the gates to the border? allowing all the immigrants to come through the title what is it title 42 or something that yeah it, it is it is crazy like i just saw this and i i don't want to post it on my youtube channel because i know what happens but hold on a second i gotta address this comment here so what do i know about canadian politics i know trudeau is your prime minister not because i looked at jose's comment but i didn't happen to know that already i know your flag has a leaf in it and i know your hockey teams but that doesn't count towards politics but yeah um do you like trudeau Tell us. I don't know. Well, you don't have to, but <laughs> Jose Guzman here said, 
no Trudeau's policies are more than enough. So Zim stopped it. Yeah, Zim did stop the dividends, unfortunately. Um, oh, here it is. There it is. I, I hope this is the video. It's it will blow your mind, man. That there is. I'm having too much fun talking about this other stuff now. I don't. We're probably not going to get back into our our dividend stuff. It's all right. Uh, she says Americans know little about politics in any country, more into sports and bread and circus. That's true because, you know, a lot of people, what I'm annoyed about, this whole debt ceiling thing, I can't tell you how many people, because I try not to, I'm getting to the point, I really try not to focus on it now because it just makes me mad. There's nothing we can do about it, you know. Um, but there's so many people that are like, wow, have mm. you heard about this debt ceiling thing? I'm like, this is the same charade that goes on. It was going on in the Obama years too, you know, the same, it's a charade. It'll get raised, you know. Zim, yes, yeah. for this quarter at least. Zim said months ago the I, divvy was ending. That's true. Yes, immigrants can join. Trust me, I would know. Um, oh, are you? Well, you're legal, I would think, or you're a citizen by now, I would think. I mean, you seem you seem good. You invest. You know what you're doing and whatnot. Not that others don't. Wait. You don't have two US parties to choose from. Well, how many... How many parties do you have? I like I like having multiple options. I like when I go out, I like having like five parties to choose from. Even undocumented immigrants can serve. They call them badgeless. So, well, yeah, I mean stuff. I get stuff like that. Yeah, Gene Mancuso says you can vote. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like an open secret, honestly. Oh, there's and our debt this block. This is again. why I, I need to see by state. Can you pull up Florida? Yeah, give me a second. I usually I am go to the DeSantis, like after DeSantis, I don't know who we're going to get as governor. If, oh, um, you think DeSantis, if he doesn't win, he'll, uh, I mean, if he, if they say he doesn't win, he'll continue? Well, he's term limited. This is, you can only serve two terms as governor in Florida. Oh. So, um, yeah. So we'll have someone new next time. But we came so close in 2018, that guy Gillum that ran against him, mm. he could have been. Think about it. You could have had you could have had Stacey Abrams in Georgia, and you could have had oh. Gillum, Florida. That's how it was. Anyone, why would I know. anyone vote for that retard? I mean, oh my god, I'm so well, I, I do well, not understand who people would vote. Stacey Abrams is like a a horrible person. Like, why would anyone want her? Well, that oh guy Gillum. God. I don't know if you've heard of that guy Gillum. He was almost governor here. I mean, it was it was close. Why did people? I I watched her videos and and thought about making reaction videos to it and like. If someone says race every few sentences, that is like a red flag. Like, I don't like when people say black people this, white people this. Like, can we just talk just people? Just Here. people. I have such a smart audience. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, the Florida flag is this. It's the Spanish flag, basically. If you ever go to St. Augustine, mm -hmm. St. Augustine is the oldest city in North America, actually. It was founded by the Spanish, like the fort and stuff like that. So, yeah, the cross that you see, it's that's actually the there's a lot of Spanish influence in Florida. There it is right there in the middle. Um, okay. uh, you just scrolled over it, but yeah, basically not the seal of the state, but no, it is. Um, there's a lot of Spanish influence, um, cause Florida was, a, well, Florida is a Spanish name actually. Oh. So, but yeah, that's, uh, St. Augustine is a lot of history in St. Augustine right in the middle there. That's like the colonial Spanish flag in the middle, like where the, where? see the, that below it, no, below it. See the one that looks like it has like arrows or something. That's the Spanish flag. They oh, actually fly right it. They actually fly it at the fort, the Castillo, Castillo uh, de San Marcos in St. Augustine. They actually, so I was there in January, and um, it's, it's really historic, like I say, oldest city in America. Um, the Spanish monarchy still recognizes it as like a Spanish fort. Wow. How old is, are you going to when was Florida? 1500. Uh, well, the Spanish were here in like the 1500s. So yeah, good point. Good point, Jose. Absolutely right. I have nothing against, like I say, the border, like immigrants, stuff like that. I just, you know, I wish that, um, I wish we could clean things up with our way, the way our immigration system works. You yeah. Know, but neither party will do anything. No, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't think anyone will do anything about it. I mean, if someone want, they they have the resources to to, to solve this problem. And mm -hmm. to me, like, if I had to fix this problem. Just don't incentivize the way they're currently doing because people are trafficking a lot of drugs and a lot of people getting hurt along the way. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to come to America anyways. There's, there's just oh, we just missed each other by a month. How about that? Because I was there in January. That's cool. 
Um, yes, yeah, Spain still recognizes St. Augustine. What's funny, too, if they find treasure off the coast, like, you know, some mm -hmm. of those galleons that sank, like, they, that with gold coins and stuff, if they find treasure off the coast of Florida, the Spanish government, it's like property of the Spanish government, apparently. So, interesting, mm -hmm. interesting facts. This is actually really cool. Look at this. Uh, give me one second. What time is it? Oh, there's your 4%. If you go back to the yield max, that's the 4% you were talking about. Actually, so history lesson here. So Florida didn't become part of the United States until like after the Civil War. Um, well, it, it actually, no, it became a state in 1845, but then it went like with the Confederacy and all of that. But it was part of the Spanish. And then I think um, they sold it like the British had it. Like in the Revolutionary War, um, the, that fort became like a British fort. So like American revolutionary prisoners were sent to the fort because Florida was like part of the British. Then it was sold back to the Spanish, changed hands a couple of times and then became part of the United States finally, like 1845, I think. Then yeah. it went with the Confederacy. And then after that, it, then it was permanently part of the United States. There's the fort right there, um, that picture that? in the middle, middle right. Middle right, right here. This one? That's it. Yeah, click that. This is where is this in Florida? St. Augustine. So um, yeah, it's like right on the coast. No way. The east coast of the state. It's really cool. You know what's funny though? What's annoying? So I've been there probably three times, and um, this last time, it I guess because of the way things are, the liabilities, and the way people are and stuff, they fire cannons at the fort, but they're so like you know, CYA about it. They keep saying, oh, cover your ears. It's going to be so loud and stuff like that. And they fire it one time. And honestly, the cannon's louder at the Bucks games here in Tampa. Like the cannon's louder here than it is there. It's like one, they fire it one time, but because of all the liability oh. and stuff, they probably had people sue and whatnot. They say, oh, my ears hurt. Yeah, that's the fort though. That's the fort. Wow. I mean, I lived in Florida for like a year and some change. I didn't mm -hmm. even think this was here. The oldest wow. fort in America, the oldest church in America, built by the Spanish, too. What's funny is that these buildings that were built like 500 years ago are built better than they build stuff now. They built it out of like coquina. Like that's what's in the like the shells and stuff. They mixed it with concrete and built it. Obviously, it's had to have been renovated since then, but these buildings still still stand. That's crazy because like uh, it's like if you go to Vegas, there's potholes for no reason. Like the roads is like. So yeah, same with California. Actually, my county in Florida, Hillsborough County, is getting that way too. Um, they finally just paved the road by my house, but there's some. It's cool. Uh, some of these forts. So, cannon cannonballs wouldn't yeah. penetrate the coquina walls. So it was like really, it was like the ultimate structure. But there's parts of St. Augustine where you can see like a cannonball hit, and it's like indented and stuff like that. It's really historic. If you ever get a chance to go, they have like the city gates and whatnot where they would like seal it off. Very, uh, very historic for sure. I want to go back, make it like an annual trip. I see. Look at that. Yeah, the National Park Service runs it. We don't have like that in Vegas. Really? No, no, I did see when I was there, though, there's some bars like, you know, where Fremont Street is. There's some bars, oh, yeah. like there's one called the Atomic Inn or something, and they used to watch the, and you could see from the second or third story in the desert where they would test the atomic bombs. I mean, I get this, this is a casino of humans. There's a Titanic casino, I mean, Titanic Museum. Oh, really? Yeah, it's in Luxor. Oh, okay. How far is that from? It's at the end of the strip, the very, very end. Uh, the Luxor is a big black pyramid. Uh, we have a oh i've heard of the luxor oh i've seen the, i've seen the luxor yeah yeah on the strip we have a florida joke here southernmost place in florida about these big rocks well key west is like the southernmost place but i don't know are you referring to like drinks on the rocks so they have a titanic museum too yeah That's it's cool. actually i went there once and i would say that the best part of the entire casino is just this uh, place they actually have real live parts of the titanic is that the museum that like moves around? Cause they, they had a Titanic museum. That's like, it moves, it goes from state to state. 
Because I've seen that part of the Titanic, the one with the porthole in it. Yeah, I mean, if you guys know anything about the uh, Titanic, guys, I do. Actually, about, I was really into it for a while. If, if you guys research about one of the people, there's one individual that's on that boat. J.P. That, Morgan. Yeah. Wow. Well, he's still about thunder. <laughs> he missed. No, no. Well, go ahead. But he actually oh. he canceled his ticket yeah. at the last minute. Is that well, what you're going to say? Yeah, and I was like, and one of the founders of the so-called Jekyll Island was on that boat because he didn't yes, want to be part JP, Mr. JP Morgan. Oh, man. If you want to go down a real rabbit hole, <laughs> if you want to go down a real rabbit hole about that, um, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with this, but do you have Amazon Prime? I just would, oh, here it is, Jekyll Island. This, this one will really blow your mind. So talking about conspiracy theories and whatnot, there's, there's a... There's a documentary out there, and I, I disagree with it. I just look at it as entertainment. But there's a theory that the ships were switched. You know, there was the Titanic, there was the Olympic. Mm -hmm. Well, there was three ships. There was um, <laughs> hold on a second. Varden's funny here. Unsinkable women. That's a story for you. Uh, this rock. So you're focused on rocks here, right? Um, all right. <laughs> so the rock, the southernmost point in the United States. That's the rock that says like 90 miles to Cuba. I think that's what we're talking about. All right. Back to conspiracy theories. I'm having fun. With <laughs> Not that I agree or disagree with this, but it's very interesting for entertainment purposes. Um, we'll get to this in a second here. Um, so you had the Titanic, the Britannic, and the Olympic. The Titanic and the Olympic were identical ships, right? So there's a theory that the ships were switched in an insurance scheme because, you know, the White Star Line owned by Mr. J.P. Morgan was on the verge of bankruptcy. And Lloyd's of wow. London, ironically, which is still around till this day, was the insurer, the underwriter of a White Star Line. So it just so happened if the White Star Line, I think I'm okay saying this, I, I'm, I'm just <laughs> having enough fun, but if it just so happened <laughs> if the White Star Line lost a ship. Um, well, they recovered when they lost the Titanic, they recovered the full insurance amount for the, for the ship going down. But the theory, and I, I, I don't believe it, I just look at it, it's, it's entertaining, but there's a documentary on uh on prime about this and it says so the olympic was in a collision with a ship called the hms hawk in new york harbor like a year before the titanic was even built and the ships were identical the only difference was the windows went all the way across um on the uh titanic oh, wow. or on the olympic so in, in the britannic the reason it's white in that picture because the britannic was like a world war one it became a hospital ship basically it sank in a u-boat attack in the aegean sea uh, and it was torpedoed by like a German U-boat and it sank. It's still there. They can dive to it. It's like uh, in it's in like three or four hundred feet of water. But interesting fact too. Uh, one of the nurses. Oh, you're going to get me going on this here. I used to be I was really into the Titanic. Um, <laughs> one of the nurses uh, that was was on all three ships, basically. Um, she was on the Olympic, survived the Titanic and survived the Britannic. So all three of them were in some kind of collision the Titanic and the Britannic sank. The Olympic served the whole time, but some people, the, the theorists that say the ships were switched, say that the mm -hmm. Titanic went on to serve, the real Titanic went on to serve as the Olympic the yes. whole time, basically, until it was decommissioned in like 1930. But but look it up. Oh, that's so funny. You were a step ahead of me there, Varden. So she was known as the unsinkable woman. There was also some unsinkable Molly Brown that, uh, yeah, wanted to go back. And interesting thing, You'll have to watch that documentary now. Wow, you! I have such a smart audience. That was her name, Violet Jessup. Survived all the sinkings, even though the even though the Olympic didn't sink. But anyway, so the whole thing, so the Olympic, right? There we go. Was in a collision with the HMS Hawk, tore like a three hundred foot hole in the side of the ship and whatnot. So the ship was like not new at that point, right? It was it was damaged. So that's what the theory says that the, you know the ships were switched and whatnot. Um, and some people, like there was a passenger named Lawrence Beasley, I think, that wrote a book. And I, you could, you could do a Google preview of his book. But when the ship hit the iceberg, there's like mixed reviews. Like some passengers saw it, some passengers didn't, I guess. And he says it didn't feel, he didn't feel anything or something. Lawrence Beasley, um, he wrote, he wrote a book about the whole thing. But anyway, a lot of interesting things when you really start getting into history and stuff. A lot of, a lot of really interesting things for sure uh, oh my god if i hey let me type this to you real quick uh, in the private chat i don't know if i can say it i have like 
you know, my, the audience I have is like, we're on the same wavelength. It's so funny. So um, hypo, uh, it, uh, here, I typed it to you in private chat. Okay. Hold on a second. I got, I got a lot of good comments here. It's, it's so yeah. funny. Cause like my, the, this audience, like we're like on the same wavelength. It's so funny. Um, <clears throat> okay. There's a comment I skipped over, but I'll get back to it in a second. Um, mm -hmm. having a lot of fun here with this one. Oh, the Luxor Hotel used to have a King Tut water ride. Did you ever see the Star Trek park? Not to not to diverge from this, but did, did, were, were you? Have you been in Vegas like most of your life? Yeah, a lot of it. I've been I've been out since I was in the military. So there was a Star Trek park. Like they had, it was in the Bellagio, I think, or it was in the Hilton. It was like a, they had the Enterprise. It was a Star Trek. Um, it's gone now, but it used to. My brother went to it. It used to be really fun. But anyway, okay, we addressed that one. Wow, a Titanic chat. You know, it's perfect on Financial Channel, talking about J.P. Morgan and financial stuff, the Titanic. Mm. Another one I'm going to throw at you here in a second. Let me get let me get to all these comments here because I feel like everybody's on the same page here. Jekyll Island meeting was real, not a conspiracy at all. We'll get to that in a second. Oh. I have one. I have one that'll really blow your mind, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think one of the one of the fans already hinted at it. The Olympic was not getting an insurance claim paid. Belfast workers said they put the Titanic name. Oh, see, she's on the same page. Not saying it's right or wrong, but it's definitely an interesting watch. I don't doubt it at all. The nurse, yeah. Purser. No, the purser was like the one that uh, did the jewelry and stuff. Like the, uh, they don't call it a purser. Now Now they call it like uh, the bail bondsman or something. It's not, that like I, that's uh, like an old term. Glenn... Floor, fjords? Listen to this here. Um, and that's why we pay taxes on April 15th. That's the day the Titanic sank accidentally. That That's true. You know what got my attention on that? Um, I don't know if I want to dox myself here too much. <laughs> but um, I used to work for Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. And in my training, one of the trainers pointed that out, what the very thing that you're saying about how our founder – uh, owned the White Star Line and whatnot, and just the way he said it, it just it piqued my interest because I was always into that. So that's true. April fifteenth is the day the Titanic sank. Ironically, that became Tax Day, right? The day that it sank, and they mock us every year as they celebrate the passing of their usury scheme. So here's what I'm going to throw at you now. So a lot of the, so there were some of the richest people in the world at the time on that ship. The people that went down with the ship, like. Uh, J.J. Astor, the Strausses, they were opposed, and you'll like this one, they were opposed to a private central bank. Oh, here it is. You hear what I said, though? Yeah. So yeah, they were they opposed were. to a private central bank. There's Ismay, the owner of the White Star Line. Um, or no, he was, the, he was the president of the White Star Line. He snuck into a lifeboat. Um, okay, so the people, the, a lot of these people that were opposed, they went down with the ship, basically. They were opposed to a private central banking system, which Mr. J.P. Morgan wanted, ironically. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, it's very interesting. In, our, in American history, our mm -hmm. founding fathers have always tried to fight against central money being controlled. Because mm -hmm. it ends up, it always ends up the same. Fiat currency, hyperinflation, or sense of some type of inflationary, decrease yeah. of purchasing power, and their elites buy everything. Let me get to this comment here. Um, we'll look that up too. But um, he's right because I've seen it too. It's not just her, but um, a lot of people, I think AOC wanted that too. Um, I've heard it. So what he's saying is right about the, she wants the voting age to be 16. Um, I've seen it too. Hey, Jose. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I tell people the reason, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Voting requirements, in my opinion, should have a lot more responsibility. But the politicians know that the younger the individual, they probably don't read. They don't they just they don't understand what's happening. So they have an easier vote if they try to throw in some hashtags. BLM. See, I, think, I wouldn't use I wouldn't use the word restricting votes. But what I would say, I think mail in votes should be if you're disabled, if you're old, like mail in votes should be a much smaller percentage of the population yeah. than they are. Much, I much. mean, there are politicians on record that say that mail-in voting, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I've just about gotten into everything else. Uh, there are politicians on the record that say that uh, mail-in voting is like uh, ripe for um, like fraud and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I mean, 
So yeah, whether you agree or disagree with that, I, I think that I actually vote by mail myself. I'll tell you, in the state of Florida, it's um, in military. I, I left out the biggest category. If you're in military, you're stationed. If you're stationed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, overseas, that should that's that's where absentee balloting started, right? Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I I just think that see during COVID, uh, like the mail-in voting was was mm -hmm. massively expanded. It's trustworthy here in Florida, like in my county, it's a it's a very well-run process. It's been developed because if you remember, Florida in 2000 was at the epicenter of uh, election controversy. So the state of Florida cleaned up uh, what was going on over the last 23 years. So that's why if you look in 2020, ironically, when other states took days to count, the state of Florida was done with all the mail-in votes we have, the state of Florida was done counting that night, you know? So even during a pandemic, it was doable. Anyway. Why would, isn't it interesting that the certain key states had long, longer terms of counting versus other well, states I'm not that were not? That. I mean, you can, you can draw your own <laughs> conclusions on that, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like five states <laughs> took like five days to count, but that's all normal, you know. That's nothing, nothing to see. That here, big so. giant F, F is fantastic. <laughs> hey, that's for our jobs numbers. Uh, oh, I, somebody's fired up here. Wait, Stephen, invisible steps to financial freedom, military. Oh, I've seen him show up. Yeah, I looked at. Um, I, I didn't figure out what the steps were because they're invisible. I made that joke before. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. Um, I don't want to get the audience too fired up here, but you know, we're all, um, we're all like-minded financial people. I don't want to, I don't want to divide anybody here. Oh, but Milton Freeman. Yeah. I like him. That's the main Milton reason I support libertarian economic policies. They're against central planning. Have you guys listened to Milton Friedman? Of course he wasn't uh, Austrian, but still very good. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Milton, Milton Friedman fan. I actually, um, in my undergrad, I majored in economics, uh, as an, as an undergrad. That's why I know a lot about, that's why I know how the jobs numbers and all that work without really looking at it. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I've studied a lot of that. I would like to, if I had more time to read and stuff, I'd like to read a lot of these, um, Milton Friedman, Ayn Rand stuff, people like that, you know, just, it's all about more time, but yeah, I yep. mean, if, if I ran things like, I definitely think the mail-in voting should be a lot less than it is for sure. I think that, you know, just go in person and vote paper ballots yeah. and that would I make mean, things a lot better. Oh. Oh, I got a question for you. Okay. Hypothetically, if you were king of America for just say one day, what three things would you change? If you can, if, the, if, it, if it can be changed at all. God, narrowing it down to three things. Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I'd have like, everybody would learn finance um, in school hmm. for one thing. Um, God, this is a tough one. You might bait me into something controversial. <laughs> I would almost say like um, get rid of the Federal Reserve System, but yep. at this point, it's kind of like a necessary evil. Um, got three things, narrowing it down to three things. Um, I would um, I get rid of a lot of um, like I wouldn't I wouldn't restrict oil and stuff like that. Like I would I would allow you know electric vehicles and all of that, um, but I would keep drilling here and stuff like mm. that. Um, and um dang it's Let's tough. See. Uh, my main thing would be getting doing a term limits for uh oh, yeah house of, yeah yeah house of representatives and uh senators for sure also, for sure second thing would be get audit and get rid of the fed and my third thing which would probably be kind of new is probably no no cia or fbi that's what JFK wanted to do, and yeah. saw what happened to him. Oh yeah, that's my yeah. king. Be a king for a day. <laughs> right. Yeah. I saw your comment in the private chat. Um, is it is it is it the same thing? Exact same excuse. What's well, yeah. the same? It's the same interests that are yeah. in a lot of the stuff. And and the same insurance claim too. Like. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Like um, what was it? Um, Building Seven. Oh, I just I just want to say I don't. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Even my own channel, I would never say it on there. Oh. Right, <laughs> right. And it's it's scary stuff. But uh, actually, here let me show you guys a picture of. If you guys want to follow some really good economists, Milton Freeman, uh, Thomas Sowell, as a, a one who's still living, and uh, AOC. <laughs> oh yeah, AOC. She knows. 
Oh my god. She somehow she somehow got a degree in economics from an American university. And she made the claim that the reason the unemployment rate was so low was because people are working multiple jobs. Oh. And it's it's concerning because so an American university spit this out, basically. Uh, what's it called? Have you guys Isn't watched the uh there's a talk with AOC does a talk with um a uh What's his name? He does the border. The he's like the uh, the leader of the border control Mayorkas. in the United States. Yeah, my I can't you. believe he's still there. That that guy yeah. shouldn't. I I can't even believe he's still there. He's not like accountable to anybody at all. Was it border czar? Yeah. That guy, <laughs> I, I I'm not gonna say too much, but I mean he's like I don't know. I would almost I mean, say borderline treasonous or something. Treason. <sighs> I mean, oh, seriously, man. just he doesn't care. Every time they grill him, he just he doesn't give a shit. He's like very smug, and you know. Yeah, you know, I, I watched it, and what gets me really irritated is like when they ask him a direct question, he he doesn't have to answer it. Like, why do we have congressional hearings? They never do. They're like, never accountable to anybody. What did he say here? I'm not saying I disagree, but central planning doesn't work for America because the incoming power is always destroying the work of previous administration. That's true. Yeah, it's like everybody's. Um, yeah. Always, Andre, I agree with you on all that. I mean, I just wish that... Universities are circuses now. Have you seen Mia Khalifa speaking at Oxford, Total Clown World? There's no it's way. It's all like woke and stuff. Mia... AOC. Some AOC. Actually, let, me not, let me get off the of images. I'm talking Mia Khalifa. I like the soul, man. <laughs> I don't know. What's the, what's the soul? Oh, is that Thomas Soul? Yeah, Thomas Soul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thomas Soul. I mean, you I have wish... enough dollars, you can get lots of degrees in U.S. universities. Well, I got um, tuition reimbursement on mine, so that helped oh, me. Oh wow! Um, I, I went to um, I went to uh, in here in Florida. I went to uh, USF for my undergrad, then I went to UT University of Tampa for my master's degrees. It's a pretty good school, but um, yeah, I probably have more education than I need at this point. But you, I mean, know. you got me there. I don't have like college, but I mean, I study finances like insane amount like it's well, you know a lot i mean you know more i i should know all this from my programs and stuff but there's it doesn't matter there's people that have ma there's people that i went to my master's program with that can't find jobs you know so it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to land like a great what? job how the heck is he an economist who ben bernanke ben bernanke's horrible His well i mean book. he was he was better than i think he was better than greenspan <laughs> I mean, he did. Like, he did prevent a, a great depression, I guess, in two thousand eight. Like, how bad do you want it? Like, they are like we're, like, we're told like he's in. He, let's say Bernanke is a D, and the other ones are Fs. And Jan, Janet Yellen's like a, not even on the board of grades. F minus. <laughs> I hope Janet Yellen's not on here. But and then it'd be like AOC on here. You're like, oh, Janet Yellen. You is rank on here. Um, Powell. I mean, I watch this. I watch his talks, and then about how the economy and, all, and the interest rates. He would be like a D plus. A like, D plus. Yeah, but it's still bad because the way they talk about interest rates is like they interest rates are supposed to be market based, not. I see. I talk to a board of thirteen guys, and we make the rates. <laughs> wow, this guy's fired up here. <laughs> what is it? Love the passion. I have to say. Uh, who's it? Which one? This guy, Stephen. Uh, I think he was ex-military or something. Wait, hey, uh, Stephen, are you ex-military? And which branch, if you were? He's he's pretty fired up about uh, what some of the other commenters were saying. It's funny, <laughs> but anyway. Um, oh wow! Yeah, Janet Yellen, our girl Janet Yellen. She's old. She needs to retire. Yeah, I I just don't understand. There should be a conflict of interest of her working with the Treasury now. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. It makes no sense. I mean, it really does. I mean, oh, look at Adam Smith's on here. Wow. Adam Smith, the famous economist. Oh yeah, he he was um yeah, the hands off right. Karl Marx. I mean, ugh. Another fan favorite. AOC. I, that's her mentor, right? 
Yeah, when I when I uh, actually, if, if something I'm about, about to talk about in another video, I'm, I'm actually posting it today or tomorrow. It's a, a video about um, BLM going uh, broke and how they are taught by uh, Karl Marx. That that's their uh, one their main guy. Well, isn't it? Um, it's like a it's a white lady that runs it, and she moved to like the whitest neighborhood, <laughs> right? So yeah. go figure. And, now and, that's why I say, as far as the marketing, they have the marketing down. Like yeah. I mean. As a concept, who disagrees that Black Lives Matter? You know, like yes. as a concept, but the group itself, yeah, they're like run by Marxists, right? And they, and they got so many mansions. I made a video of them having four mansions. How? But it's hypocritical because if you're so adamant about, you know, Black Lives Matter, why, why don't you live in the ghetto? I mean, why don't you live, not, not the ghetto, but why don't you live yeah. like in the inner city? Why aren't you doing more to try to help the people you want to help, you know? I mean, they get, I mean, I don't know how they get built most of it, uh, millions, uh, millions of dollars and they run out of money. They, oh, they it's just, just like the government. Money. It's like corruption. John Forbes Nash Jr. Who's this? Oh, oh um, no. I studied him. I think he came up in my, oh, here's your answer here. So he was army. Yeah, I was right. I kind of figured he was. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. Now I got a military question for this He's guy. got a question for you. Uh, oh, Go I, ahead. Okay, All right. Which which branch do you think is the best lifestyle out of all the branches space force i'm just kidding that's new <laughs> space force god i mean i would have to look this up real quick i mean i don't know space force what do i think about I, honestly i forgot about tsly a long time ago we started talking about the titanic we got into politics we started talking about aoc <laughs> i honestly it's like um you're talking about these other things then you put other stuff in front of me and my attention's there now. <laughs> oh, let's see. I wonder what he thinks. I mean, I will say this. I like it enough to where I'm invested in it. Let's see. If I know we, that's what we, most, of you, most of you joined on here for that, right? Yeah. I would say if, if I'm trading Tesla, I actually, I need to put my robot on this. This this manipulation thing right here and here this is, this doesn't scream safety. Mm -hmm. I think if I had to short it, it would probably be in like two dollar increments, mm -hmm. or uh, I have to trade it in two or three dollar increments. You see? Uh, give me one second, guys. I need to. I can't analyze it because the market's closed. Yeah, I wish the market was open longer. Stephen, you came to the right channel. This is the TSOY Groupie channel. Exactly. A great fans here, great audience. You know, and I think of all the channels on YouTube, there's not like, as far as audience and. Mm. Uh, what would I call myself? I'm the channel lead. Like I, we're like all on the same page, you know. So it's it's really cool. Like it's uncanny. Like we're all we're like all on the same page, you know. It's great. Like a lot of times the audience will say something I'm thinking before I'll even say it, you know. We got some people in uh, actually Rumble talking right now. Give me a second. Oh, put that up too. Give me a wow, that's the best compliment I've gotten in a while. The John John Lennon. Of the group. John Lennon of the group, my favorite communist. Wow, wasn't he? You know that song. Wow, I look like John Lennon. I'll have to. I don't have. Didn't he have long hair? We're investors. Yeah, we are. You know, oh, in that's group, when you're answered. an investor, you have an investor mindset, right? Yeah. Look at that. He answered. He did answer you. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. It's if it's easy, I'd say Air Force. But if truly looking to fight and have adrenaline running, Army. Uh, I, I, I disagree about that, man. I, I, I went to Afghanistan twice, and I'll say uh, we all That's get like a piece front of lines. it. Oh, Air Force is front lines, too. Really? I thought Air Force. What, my grandpa was in the Air Force, and he said it was like it was easy. He said it was like you don't, you're don't, you not in combat at all. It depends on what job you have. Okay. Yeah. And I'd say, like, I served nine years in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I would say when I deploy to Afghanistan, you will – you see things a little bit different, especially how they treat you versus right. the other branches. Right. My uncle said when he went to um, – my uncle was in the Navy, and he was in, like, you know, the whole thing in the 80s, like Gren Grenada. Oh, here, um, we bring that up. In the 80s. Like, so he, he went there, and he said his first time traveling outside of the United States, like, when he got home, he, like, kissed the ground. He was so glad to be home. Actually – can I bring this up real quick? 
no, no, no. I don't want to bring that up. That's I can't kind of focus. I have, I have ADHD. I need my Adderall or something. Just gonna, kidding. I don't take that. I was going to show a picture of uh, Afghanistan, uh, what, what's there, but maybe a little different. <clears throat> take a chill pill. Okay, Tesla and TSY. Okay, here. You know, if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll go right back to that since you brought it up. The out. audience is focused, but the commentators aren't necessarily. But the audience focus makes up for it. Here. So, hypothetically speaking, guys. Focus like I, a Ford. What is that? <laughs> what is I don't even drive Ford. Here, let me just put this on the screen. <clears throat> see, I agree. I work, too. Because, see, so this channel is not yet, like, the big channels. So, I still have to work a job. But once this gets big... I can do this three, four, five times a day, you know? Mm. I'll the say... The best food I ever had was at Scott's Air Force Base. Wow, the best nice. food you ever had was at a, at a military base? Really? Okay. You know, I was in ROTC in high school, and we went on, um, we went on a ship, you know, because, well, Tampa, we have ships docked in port in Tampa, and, like, I remember we ate on one of the ships. It, it was all right. You know, it was like a military mess hall food. I mean, it's actually. It's like I almost went in. I, 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 I came very close, but in college they had Air Force ROTC, and um, it just it's just like too much paperwork and stuff. And they wanted to, uh, they were going to pay for my degree, but they wanted me to know. I had to know exactly what I was going to take. Oh, Jose's got to leave. Hey, well, thanks for joining. Glad to have you on this whole time. Two. Uh, for the see. people looking at Tesla, and remember, Marines, yeah, this is Marines and uh, Special Forces of the Real Military. I was active Navy. Well, thank you for your service. The Yacht Club and Airedales. Yeah, a lot of people think that Marines are like they're like the first ones, like front lines, right? Yes, Jose. I was not talking about comments. Oh, look who showed up! Uh, late arrival here, KJK. Good. Hey, I reached out to Jay, but um, I don't think I've heard back yet. Nvidia is the move. Yeah, I'm. Yesterday it was. Do you see what Nvidia has done today? I wish I was okay. in. <clears throat> Give me a second. And Go ahead. I know you were trying to say something. Uh, for the guys who are looking at uh, uh, Nvidia, real quick, I'm adding a simple indicator called Fractals. What Fractals does it shows basically simple highs and lows. Okay. Yield max uh, fans. Yield max fans unite. So are you all happy with this? We're up in NVIDIA, NVIDIA, 544 tomorrow, $5.44. We're up from 2082 at close to 2626. Damn, wish I had bought in. Well, I had to pay off some credit cards and stuff. If you look at, so remember, guys, this is just my estimate. Like, I'm just talking how my robots would uh, trade this, but uh, Tesla had three points of entry. If you guys, Look at the entry points. Point one for me. This is just me, my assessment. One hundred one hundred and sixty-five dollars and twenty-six cents. That's the first entry. The second entry, I'm um, to the primary one was uh, over here in the first. The most, the mis, major entry. So if I saw this here and missed it, I would enter it off of this hammer candle. So this candle right here. This indication shows me that this market has to go higher. And this one right here. I don't know if you guys uh, follow technical analysis. I really don't. I just look at where banks enter. Any major institution shows clear signs that they entered the market. And these two points are clear signs that the market is forced to go higher. Because it, 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 they have to exit with enough uh, liquidity on the opposite side. He got in at the right price. You must have got in right after earnings. Great buy. You guys, asking TSL, let me see. Uh, said a long guys time Microsoft from yesteryear. Ooh. Oh, you're five, saying five, NVIDIA five. or NVDY? What's KJK Good saying here? Yeah, yeah great, great buy. That was a great, uh, great entry point. Microsoft? Yeah, let me bring that up real quick. Four hour. Let's see if I've lost any subscribers wow. after all this ranting here. No, no. Uh, I mean, I, I think that your, your audience loves you enough. Well, most of us agree. Um, I did lose some last week, but yeah, most of us agree. Yeah, I mean, it's like my audience. I talk about politics in this so often that mm -hmm. they, they, they're already used to it because, I mean, I won't talk about what I said in that chat over there, that private chat. I won't say that. No, That's no, how you, no. 
Heck no. Just when you thought we got into everything. There's, like, there's some things, that even me, I won't say. Right. That is one of them because I don't want to, hey, your account has been disabled. <laughs> well, like the Titanic thing we were talking about, you, you can basically use logic and you can uh, you can imply that, you know, if you believe that, you can imply that that's been done other times in history. And attempted like three times prior. Yeah. And even the Simpsons episode has it on it. I know. I was going to mention it's, that. Oh, my. The magazine. Yeah. I, I wish I could. I don't. Ah, the dangerous. Simpsons, like, you know, the Simpsons predicts everything. They predicted the Russia-Ukraine thing, too. They, they uh, predict yeah. everything. So does was, Family Guy. If you ever watch Family Guy, mm, they I think predicted, I was. Thinking, um, Caitlyn Jenner. Let me see. Uh, they predicted uh, the Boston Marathon thing. Like, uh, there's a lot of stuff, actually. Give me one thing. I think I was talking about uh, Ukraine two years prior to it being on the news. Oh, jump. oh were you? Yeah, because of, uh, Ukraine was following an oil contract. Yeah. And, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to say it. Uh, I was going to. I'm just going to say this right here. Give me one second, guys. If you have time, please look this up. This is called uh, Oil Tanker Tanker Routes. Here you go. Oh, is that the shipping lanes? I think you, you showed this. Yeah. Before. I was researching this off of another YouTuber called Peter Schiff, and he oh, was yeah. talking about Ukraine two to three years ago before it hit the news. And I started researching it too, and I was like, wouldn't it be awkward if there was a war in Ukraine just to cut off all access to oil from their country? My audience is so smart. Same wavelength. Same wavelength. Let's see. So for uh, Mike, which stock do you guys want to cover? Uh, Microsoft or well, We were talking stocks. Tesla. I I forget. <laughs> Hold oh. on a second. Let me, let me look at this one here. Um, compound or jump? This is not technical. This is fundamental. Look up at the horizon I got in from bottom. Well, where did you get in? You got to tell yeah, us. Yeah, what, what price? You bought. Hold on a sec. You bought Nvidia last fall. Yeah, so did I, and I sold it in February. Stupidly. Yeah, Five to ten at, years out. Where's hold on. Nvidia? Thanks. I wasn't sure. So new. I was wondering, am I going to lose? No. You you got in at a great point. Honestly, I bought in at like fourteen seventy five. I'm just now about to break even. I agree. Just don't watch it every day. It's like a long term thing. Oh, um, oh, actually. Hold on a second. Just you, three more, and then you can you can have the floor. Oh, okay. Patience will pay with TSLA and Nvidia. I sense Nvidia is a banger. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent True. I would like to buy maybe 500 on all of them. It's a good idea. Well below 100. Wait for the dividend. I agree. Wait for dividend and earnings probably. All right, go ahead. You got the floor. Oh, which which dividend are they talking about? Which one to go first? Tesla uh, dividend. Both of them, I think, because Nvidia is coming with the dividend. Okay, so. Um, Oh, wow. oh, KJ, I so I, I reached out to Jay. Um, I'll, I guess I'll follow up with him again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll do. I'll just follow up tomorrow. Give me a second, guys. Fast. I get I'm below 100, Stephen. So first thing I'll do is Tesla first, and I'll break down Microsoft and Nvidia. So, for example, if I uh, since Tesla is such a volatile stock, my entry point. If I, because I, mean, I don't trade all stocks, I'm not a big stock fan unless it's dividends. But if it's if I had to enter, it would have to be in this zone right here. It's like I had to cherry pick it, but this is what I would have entered no matter what. If I was uh, looking at Tesla, just this zone right here. There's the only reason that supports this is because this gap here identifies that one someone pushed the pressure down too large for it to be small retail traders. A retail trader couldn't do this. So this basically this arrow here, no retail trader can push this down. Someone who has more influence and more money than what probably we uh, than like probably like a small bank mm -hmm. did this. But what confirms this is that the gap filled here. So for me, if I saw this trade, all my robots would just be buying every single candle up and exiting at this price right here. So for me, you see this eagle head right here? This is the candle that's right here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. This is where they exited at. This price right here. They all exited at the price of what? 191.40. So that was a good trade when it comes to them. You're talking about nearly 10, 20 bucks worth of dollars. 20, uh, 10, 20 bucks per share. Uh, if you're trading like I am, I'm highly leveraged. So it's a lot more if I'm correct. Buy the dip. 
Uh, the dip is the dip would have to be measured if there's enough momentum. This dip here, here exceeded 100 percent, so it is probably 150 to 160 percent. So the next move. So for me, I would have to wait for the next move. The mm -hmm. next move, we're possibly if it gaps. So hypothetically, we'll do this right here. Let's just put this in. Uh, let's make this uh, red candles. I mean red, red boxes. And if I'm over, if I'm going too technical, let me know, guys. I just this is how I break down the markets when I personally trade. Oh, the guy that said that he's been gone a while. I think Robert Smith. He's he's been gone a while, even though he's on West Coast time. If the price can gap again and go below 171 or below this zone here, it will, to me, if it gaps down fast like this right here, it will be a clear sign that another player wants to bring it back down to ram it up to this high, the 210 level. Mm -hmm. So I, me personally, I would be out of my trade with a, with a, with a holder trade right here. And what a holder trade means – is that your first trade? Let me make this candle a different thing. Triangle properties. Let's go. Uh, let's do orange. So, for example, if you enter here in this zone over here, you would exit a portion of your trade here and hold and do a, a basically a, your stop loss. You will lock in your trade and let it trade run higher. But most likely, what I would bet on that whoever's moving this market is going to shove the market back down to these levels again. I can almost guarantee 150s will be hit again to hit up higher, to hit up to the 200s. And that's where I would probably enter the market again. Enter here or here to head up to here and then exit again. Because the, 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 the basically the smart money needs to knock out the dumb money. Yeah. They need to knock you, they need to knock you guys, oh, no, no, not you guys specifically, but just they need to knock out dumb money to get the liquidity to head up higher up here. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's enough liquidity here because it's already telling you, see this candle right here, just to zoom in. See that candle right here? Yeah. Oh, wow. How do I do that? I just zoomed in like super high. Whoa, what's going on? Uh, let me see. Stop. Uh, is my screen super zoomed in? Um, it just disappeared. Yeah, it's like my my whole like all my screens just crashed. I got five monitors and they're all like mm. it's crashed. Yeah. Oh wow. My computer crashed. Oh shit. Am I still live streaming? Yeah. Yeah, we're still on. Oh wow. Yeah, my no computer screen. crashed. No screen share. Uh, do you mind? Yeah. Oh, wow. Even my... Uh... Oh, okay, I'm doing too much. <laughs> Can you uh, take off the screen share for me, please? It's gone. Oh, wow. My computer crashed. Yeah. That's super crazy. Uh, I don't even know what to do. Give me a second. Uh, let me... Uh, let me turn on my protection program. What stock were we looking at? Uh, Tesla. Yeah, that was Tesla. Uh, Tesla might hit 156 and then to hit up to 208 or 205. Well, it dropped. It was actually cheaper than Apple at one point, which I was surprised. I mean, that's never been cheaper than Apple. I mean, I, I think it has to do this because of a liquidity issue. And uh, if you guys know about liquidity trading, it, it has to do this way. Really? Huh. I tell you, they put us back on the hybrid schedule at my work. Oh, you froze up. He froze up. Let me see if I can add him back. bandwidth problems all right let me tell him let me see I'll tell him he froze up here we'll keep going a little bit longer here
Yeah, he's commenting on here. All right. All right. So, well, we've kept uh, most of you on here for uh, well over two hours. Good, good discussion so far. Let's see here. Uh, there are times when this technical analysis is great. Maybe I can learn from you. I'm, I agree. I'm learning too. I'm more of a long-term investor myself. Buy NVIDIA, Microsoft, Tesla, and their yield max cousins are the horses to ride. I agree. Always good to have a good horse to ride or a few of them. But so KJ, you think that, um, you think that, uh, what was I going to ask you now? You think that NVIDIA is the new Microsoft, basically, like we're going to have, because NVIDIA has been around the same time also, but is that what you were saying, that like NVIDIA or NVDY is the new Microsoft? Okay, he should be joining back here soon. All right. Let's see what we got here. Here he comes. You guys are more advanced than me. Yeah, especially him. He's more advanced than the technical analysis than I am. I'm more of a long-term. NVIDIA is the new Intel. You spelled NVIDIA wrong, but new Intel. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, you're back. Oh, so my, Dividends uh, will fluctuate on yield max. Yeah, we, we've learned that, haven't we? We went from 75% dividend yield in, uh, in uh, TSLY to like 36% now. Interesting. All right, I'm, okay, I got everything. Microsoft, back. Google. So he capitalized Microsoft and Google, but he didn't capitalize Palantir. So I'm guessing that means Microsoft and Google are better than Palantir. Not sure. Actually, me. Okay, I got it. I'm back. Rumble. Thank you. Hey. Look at that. Let's get ready to rumble, right? Yeah. If you guys want a, a very different platform, try out Rumble.com. It is a. There's less censorship, a lot. So people can say things like I, that I would want to say, but I can't say so much on this platform. Yeah. So you just plug Rumble on YouTube. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It's, Rumble's been really interesting. Very interesting roller coaster so far. They're all good. Not just just not as good as KJK good, right? They're not KJK good. Yet at very high rates, they oh. fluctuate. Step step out of the way, but the right name. Actually, have you seen, uh, have you heard about a uh, Bud Light stock dropping even more? Yes. Oh, yes. You know, and in the stores, like Bud Light's not getting bought. I mean, it's just, I never liked Bud Light anyway. Um, mm. It was kind of like, um, I would call it piss water. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know if you're a beer drinker at all, but I would rather have like, oh. um, huh? I can't drink alcohol at all. Oh, really? I would rather have IPA. Yeah, I haven't even so, tried like, it. My favorite beer is like we have a local brewery in Tampa called Cigar City. Um, they actually make the Lightning. The Lightning have a, a beer from them, but um, uh, I, yeah, Bud Light just it was never. I like the Budweiser, the, the Budweiser, like the actual Budweiser, like that was good. Mm. But anyway, yeah, people leaving YouTube going there. Yeah, I was gonna say you must have like fat fingers or something. The typing's a little little off there, but you'll you'll get better. My typing is terrible. It's getting worse with AI. Yeah. Oh, Funny. But like boycott, 15.7 billion lost. Man. I thought, you know, what's weird, their earnings didn't drop as much. Like their last earnings that came out, I thought it was going to be a disaster, but it wasn't. It, it, it's going to reflect the next quarter, I think. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, man, their stock idiot. price is really bad. Though. Their stock price is really, I just, really I don't bad. understand, like, I don't understand this whole thing. Like, I've taken marketing classes, okay? Like, you have, mm -hmm. like, maybe 4 or 5% of the population that you want to market to, which is fine. But, mm -hmm. like, why alienate your other 95% that's, like, your base? It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know? I mean, I like even the if they were, I just wish... Like the beer. Even if they're wrong, just say they're wrong. Mm -hmm. At least apologize and just move on. Not double down and just right. you're the wrong one. It's like, come on, guys. Right. Exactly. Their, their prices. I mean, it, I would say this: if it if 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 Bud Lizer breaks forty four dollars, it's a free fall down. Mm -hmm. 
actually how much money can they how long can they survive what's the what stock prices into the establishment until they can't handle it they won't let them crash well if, if no one buys their product like i say everyone stops it won't matter like yeah but i think there's ways a whole they bunch of funding stop, they can keep a stock from completely crashing i mean you they know, can just yeah they can remove it from the trading market and put on like on a freeze like, service now is that Sir snow service now just like miller yeah it's another one i don't really care too much for m hauser bush is InBev is arrogant and stupid yeah they are what do you say i do they, they hire a woke mba girl she got lost in fratty perfect example of zero <laughs> critical thinking yeah how'd she get that job i wonder i know one person yeah. destroyed the whole brand i mean they i mean I would say the one person hurt their brand, I think it's Bud Light's decision to keep doubling down. Mm -hmm. like, like Disney. Disney. Disney does the same. Disney does the same thing. Yeah. And Disney, I mean, how many people are watching new Disney movies? I mean, every movie they have is woke. And yeah, there's like, one Friday, The Little Mermaid or something with, uh, I think they put oh. like a, a black chick as Little Mermaid. Yeah. yeah. Oh my I mean, it, even like like I, I even like most disney movies i just like just skip mm -hmm. like I, i'm surprised like i saw the new mario movie that movie did really good like yeah it, there was no craziness there's no like, I'm like wow I'm actually a good movie i know when they even like the top gun sequel last yeah. year that was good oh. like it's like a breath of fresh air no controversial stuff no wokeness none no of that. like I say when you watch the movie and you're just expecting it, like you're like, "Hey, men are this X Y Z, and women are this," and I'm like, "What are we talking mm. about again?" Like, ugh. yeah, yeah. It's funny what Join Jen said here. Um, yeah, not committed, but making making lots of money. <laughs> yeah, I actually, it's funny. I did call options on Snow back in 2021. That that was a good move. It paid off for me, but. They haven't been doing that well ever since then. Some of those I what just is, quit following. What is but, yeah. service now? Service now. Let's check this out. It's a it's a tech stock. My old company we used to use service now tickets for our basically our workload. We would we would break our work into service now tickets. They're called Snowflake Inc. What's this? Just like all the medicine commercials. It's crazy. Of course, it's HIV. Yeah, I, there's a lot of those now. Pharmaceutical companies. Top Gun Maverick did well. I agree. That was a great movie. Yeah, it was. Uh, when you see a movie like that, it's like really a breath of fresh air. It's worth watching. I, honestly, that one, the Top Gun sequel, was better than the first one. I thought. Interesting. I mean, I haven't seen it myself. Yeah, you'll have to watch it. I think it's on Paramount Plus. But yeah, it was. It was better than the the first one was good, but it was better than the first one. Uh. Actually, I just forgot the name of the movie now. Top Gun, thank you. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun. With Tom Cruise. What aircraft is he flying? He's flying the uh, like the fighter jet, like the F-16 fighter jet. And they have the MiGs, like the Russian MiGs against them. Oh, that's on the different F-16s. I see. Is that, that's the Mitsubishi one from uh, Japan. When it starts, he's in like a stealth fighter. He's got it. He's trying to break like the Mach Ten and stuff. It's not believable. It's a movie, mm. you know. But um, I used to I used to work on that aircraft for like really? two years. Yeah. But he somehow I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but somehow he survives the after breaking Mach Ten, and he ends up in like a small town and stuff. And there people are looking at him like he just came from space or something. But um, yeah, it, it's a movie. I mean that that part wasn't too believable, but you know it, it's a movie. You know. I would hate to yeah, work on that. Exactly. I didn't want to give too much away, but yeah. You'll have to watch it. Is it on Netflix at all? No, it's on Paramount. That's the thing. All these streaming services, they all have their different content that they own, basically. Oh wow, it is on there. It's on no, it's on Paramount, I thought. No, no, it's on it's on Netflix right now. It's Paramount's uh product. Good. I wonder how Netflix got it. I'll try it out. The original Top Gun might be. 
Because, uh, let me see. Top Gun. I just Googled it. And, oh, yeah. It's right there. Huh. Interesting. See? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Huh. All right. I'll check it out. I'm at, I'm at a big movie watcher. Usually all my time is in trading. <laughs> it's worth it. It's definitely mm -hmm. worth it. Last time I got I got I got recommended this movie called Don't Look Up. Oh, I've heard good things about I, that one. I hurt my soul watching it. It's too realistic. So it's okay. It's realistic because it's so cringe. Yeah. Like the whole movie is cringe, but it's it's real because I know it will happen that way. Mm -hmm. And it pisses me off that it would be. Yeah. We should let the common hit us because we can make some more jobs. What? Yeah. Uh, there's a show that was on, it was, I think it was called Utopia, and it was about a pandemic. And it's very, it came out before COVID, but it's very, like somebody mentioned predictive programming. Very weird how um, uncanny it is. And then like a year later, you know, the pandemic happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. I would hate for a Utopia to be around. That'd be such a bad thing. Yeah. Especially if you're, if you're not invited in. What's that? Uh, there's a there's a book uh, I, I there's a book that my uh, philosophy teacher talked about psychology teacher talked about so uh, the utopia idea mm -hmm. it sounds good on paper but think about the people who are not invited inside the utopia and the people who are in the utopia not on the top of the pyramid oh yeah, yeah you you live in a, such a controlled such like a, what's a social credit system <laughs> right oh man snow. Oh, actually, to go back to snow, it Sir, dropped no. quite a bit from 405 down to 177. Yeah. We'll see. He crashed it. Holy crap. You guys are... oh, spoilers. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading all the way through to keep up. Let me see. What time is that now? It's very high. It's after it's like almost one on the East Coast. Yeah. It's good though. I mean, yes, you have a good. This is good. A group of people, especially if they seeing you. Know, what was it? Every other night. Yeah. Great, uh, great audience. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, guys! You guys do me a favor. This this video only has one like. Can you guys like, smash that like button for him? Oh, I thought it had seven. Is it? I mean, let me let me reload it. I'm on my I'm on my tablet at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, most of the likes come in. It'll end up getting 30 or 40 likes, but after the fact. Oh, yeah, I loaded. Oh, wow. A lot of people That's watch, awesome. like, after the fact. Mm. I think they're going to be like, this call had nothing to do with banks. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm, it's, it's gotten to the point. Like, I don't have to worry about watch hours or anything anymore. Like, it's consistent audience. That's good. Cause... And you all are so observant, too. See, he just confirmed the seven likes. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. It shows seven yet. Yeah, I get, I get my tablet with a bigger screen, but that yeah. soft crash, I'm happy I fixed it. Yeah, that's good. Got too many things running on this thing. Yep. It's uh basically Chrome took too much of the RAM and just That's what happens. Yeah, that. mine does yeah. that sometimes too. I didn't think that Chrome took that much space, but that's why I, I don't use thing. Chrome. I just realized because is is this making noise? Because I have this sitting on a basically a step stool. It's my kind of a ghetto a work desk setup. Oh, but, are you standing um, up the entire time? Yeah, I'm, I'm a stander. Oh. But um, the sound, the 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 speakers are like under here because I have a I have this rigged looking like uh, stand up desk setup, basically. Yeah, I got. I mean, I got. I wish I can like camera, but it's just monitor, 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 monitor. Laptop. It's better. It's better for the back to stand. And, uh, you know. Oh, actually, I forgot to tell you, uh, that new that that table and stuff. I got the whole thing set up on the other oh. room, and my background will be. Uh, I got so every computer guy is a nerd in some way or a geek in some way. I'm a nerd when it comes to, like these things, so I'm putting all my figurines around my uh, in the back. Is that um. Is that like a Ninja Turtle, or is that Boba Fett oh. from Star Wars? Oh my no, I'm not that bad. That's a, that's a Gundam. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, I got all these little figurines, but this is put in the back to change it up a little bit. Oh cool. 
Yeah, I have the subscribe pillow. Um, the your thumbs up one, it's like a thumbs down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got a suggestion for a new for a browser. Yeah, Brave browser is yeah. better. We have some disagreements on yeah. the number of likes. Some people see five, some people see seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. I have those. Subscribe. I actually have those too. Yeah. There you go. Subscribe, guys. If you guys want some more amazing content, especially about finance trading, if you guys also go to my channel, Andre and Jamie Clinton. See. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Amazon, right? Yeah. yeah. I had to buy. It was funny because when I bought it, it seemed cheap. The pillow cover came in, but then I had to buy a pillow that actually fit yep. into it. Yeah. It's a, it's a third channel that I've got on that done the same thing. Uh, two of the channels, when, I, when they sell my pillows, they bought the same thing. I'm like, man, all we need is one of those platinum ones, right? I couldn't find the one with the um, thumbs up. I had never found that one. Here, this page not found. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Brave. I say Brave is a good browser. I'll say my favorite is Vivaldi. Just because it runs I've so never heard smooth. Of Brave. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, Brave and Vivaldi, they run really smooth. They don't have a memory problem. They don't crash. You can make Vivaldi look like Chrome. Exactly. I always say if it's, if it's something I've never heard of, it can't be any good because I've never heard of it. <laughs> Some people say that, like with um, different funds and stuff. They say, well, I've never heard of that. If it, if it was so good, how come I've never heard of it? And that, that's, the, that's literally their yeah. standard. They're like, well, I've never heard of it, so it can't be any good. There's so many, uh, I say, there's so many uh, funds out there, are just stocks. Oh, God, there's mm -hmm. so many things. I'll say yeah. the, 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 the amount of assets that someone can trade and get into nowadays is like limitless. You see? That's awesome. Especially if you guys looking at, if you guys looking at other asset classes, commodities, it's, it's not really hit on the news a lot, but they're very good to trade. Which one? Commodities. Like oh. actual commodities, like oh. futures. Yeah. I think the hot button market right now is probably stocks and real estate. And then when crypto gets hot again, it's going to be like cryptocurrency everywhere. Uh, what else would be a hot button? I don't know. Crude oil. When crude oil is soaring, it's always on the news everywhere. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, for sure. Crude oil. I can't wait for it to start getting to those benign numbers again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if I can out. Oh, I think when gas will hit like five, six bucks again, food probably double. But I think oil is gonna go tremendously high if it does that. It'd be a really good trade. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, corn, corn is a good like uh, futures mm -hmm. trading futures on it. It's like hoping for destruction to beat the gap destruction. Down, gap down on snow, she says. Let me see. Uh, I got snow's chart open right now. Let me see. Who's that got snow in the hourly? The only area that that snow has to look at is 135 to 142. Oh, That's can the you marker. Pull up your screen? For yeah. That one? I hope I don't crash again. But oh, actually, my memory, I cleared it out. So we got some oh, more cool. space. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that, hey, this is like the life of a programmer. If you can program really good and program different languages, you can just. I have a program that can just just remove errors that happens. Cool. Uh, screen four, where's that? Here you go. So if I'm trading snow, I will look at this main area here. Why did this happen? I mean, I don't know this company at all, so I'm looking at this kind of blindly, which is service which is now. actually a good thing. Let me see. I did some Why options did on it. I did some options on it back in 2021. Uh, a quick question: Did oh, the snow? Screen. Did snow ever split at all? Like I don't think so. I think months? it's too new. Okay. I think it's too new. Who owns snow? I gotta figure that it's out. its own company. It's publicly. Traded. No, no, I mean like uh, uh, who who's the biggest insiders? Oh, I'll have to look. What are what are those blue bars there? So, so for example, when when you look at a stock or an asset class, the first question that I usually go through is like, who is moving the market, and where are the oh, price yeah. points? Who's the market movers? Yeah, I agree. 
these these blue areas are the largest zones prior to the big move up. So remember, we're, I I don't look at it at a retail perspective because if you look at it at a retail perspective, you're gonna lose money in my mm -hmm. view. Can't tell you what to do, okay, guys. But perspective-wise, retailers enter in the worst positions. Banks are the position. So if you look at where they entered, we know that this is the best position that you could have ever had. Right here. This, mm -hmm. uh, where's my arrow at? Uh, let me see arrow, arrow. So right here, this is the best position. Okay? That one. Yeah. Where did the banks take profit at? How, where do we, where can we tell the banks took profit? Well, we know we didn't take profit here. Not so much because it went kind of uh, flat and they re-entered. And this is the biggest marker in their last order because banks like to order in, and banks like to order in big branches or big companies. They, they can't slowly ease in, they ease in, ease in, and then, and then it takes off. So this is a good example right here of them doing that. They bought this hammer, pushed it up. They re-entered off that doji. Doji massively ran up. And doji. then now we have a doji is a candle that is like kind of like a uh, flat. And then like, it's kind of like a T. Wow, I've, I've never heard of that. <laughs> You're yeah. over my head. So this is a T right here. This is a doji. You know, I've gotten to the point. Actually, my audience is teaching me more than I'm teaching them. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> nice. I mean, that's a good audience. They, they, uh, they pay attention. because I'm supposed to be the coach. <laughs> I feel like that guy on Facebook, he's supposed to be the coach. But... Oh, we got to get him on. Oh, he never man. responded. No. Yeah. Even when I responded. DM him on, like, the only time he responds him. to me. I'm going to message him um, now. I'm just going to say question mark. What's what's going on, you know? Like, it's weird. Every time I, I message him, like, in his comments and, like, his posts, he has to say something because I'm, I, I, I respond to him. Right. Because, and he, I know he doesn't like when I say things. He's like, uh, uh, he did that whole comment about um, fake news. I told him, like, isn't it weird that, Fake news is usually always real, always fact. <laughs> what did he say? He did. He's like, uh, uh, he's like, well, I don't talk about politics, and I'm like, you just talk about a political. He's like, he's supposed to be the coach on YouTube, but everything he does is like, like hidden in secrets. Right. Oh, man. oh actually, That's I funny. forgot one spot. Here we go. So look, if you guys, what's this make? Let's say me and you guys are a lawyer. Let's say we're a lawyer, right? We're trying to make a case to the judge. Okay. As a, as the judge, we're explaining this to you. So uh, THB, you're the judge, okay? Here's my case as a lawyer. Listen, uh, THB, I think that the bank entered here. And my evidence for that is because these, usually banks enter off of very flat candles. And after flat candles, there's massive movements up. Flat candle, big gap, massive movement up. And if you look at this candle right here, the, the high and low are equal to the close and open. Okay. Doji, high and low equal to the same candle. We have a big break open, the exact same pattern. So pattern here and pattern here are equivalent, not in the sense of price, but the same action because there's a gap, there's a gap. And we can tell that this is where they first did their massive exit. How do we know that they exited their trade? You see this right here, how it blew up right here? They took off their position. So some of this down here is taken off here. And here is that secondary portion. So where are the big banks or entities in this, the big players? Are they out of the market or are they still a little bit in there? My argument would be that they're almost gone. There's, 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 there's evidence right here of them entering at this big candle here to push up from this gap. But they might exit at this high. And then so, they'll all be out at that point. Well, to be honest with you, whoever entered down here is out. They're already out. They exited here on this sell-off. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, you're, the, the question would be, hey, Andre, if someone had to say, hey, Andre, should I invest into snow right now? Well, let's ask that question from the beginning. Did the big, Where did the big money enter? Well, right here. That's obvious. Look at that gap, right? Here's a gap. It's too big for a normal person to do. Was that like a month ago? Yeah, this is uh, April 24th. Okay, okay. So exactly a month ago, so, basically. So you just ask, you know what? the banks are bidding up Snowflake stock. 
Yeah, they're building it up, but they're not. I, I would I would argue that the majority of the people who have the money are out, and only small institute small institutions and retailers are still in because they mm -hmm. assume it's going too high. So for me, if we throw up a, a common indicator that many non institutions use, we use the MACD. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like the MACD, but I know that majority of people who who trade use the MACD. So we got to think like re retailers think and see how wrong they are it's basically if you guys notice how i trade it's the opposite in how people should trade i trade exactly how i try to trade like how a uh, big institution trade macd and if you, if you see where street money's at so right now with the macd being negative off of this trend 12 to, yeah 12 you should be exiting your trade from here so there's two types of entrance. There's uh, you exit off of an exit indicator, enter off into uh, enter off of, enter uh, enter off of an entry. Ah, blah. Basically, you enter from an a indicator. The indicator here is telling you you should have been out. You should have exited twice. So the banks, I would, I don't know if it's a bank, but two large, multiple large entities exited twice in their trades. The the possibility of it doing a third time, is a lot more riskier than you being down here. Mm -hmm. this is that golden you the banks told you to enter in two areas here or here and they gave you a couple of hints and clues to enter so if you're entering in now i will say you're probably entering in the most riskiest portion now than any other time uh i hope that helped everyone makes sense i've got to uh, <laughs> I've, I've got to study these charts more I I would say this: the way to study charts is how is it? look at the big players and pin to the perspective of how to take money. Mm -hmm. Most people entered off of this big gap. They're still in the trade. It went down from eighty-five dollars to seventy-seven. They're still in the trade. They, they, the banks are pulling liquidity out of the markets, mm -hmm. right? Because of this buy zone. They the idiots. I, I, I hate saying it, but that's how I think. The idiots are rebuying right here pushing it back up but the Retail. banks are looking at short yeah retail yeah. is just a bunch of idiots basically they're always wrong yeah even off of like uh the only time that the retail traders were right but still punished wrong was with uh, um gamestop yeah what's the macd telling you here at the bottom the, um so the macd shows a couple things you have a moving you have a, a moving average cross and also a uh momentum so mm -hmm. what i tell people is this when you trade there, when you buy, when you trade, there's two points that you should take. Take profits at a certain price. You should always take a profit at a certain price, and then you hold your trade for an exit indication. Okay. Say that again. So, so here I'll give you an example, right here. This is what I do, and this is how I've only seen managed accounts because I manage a portfolio right now. Mm -hmm. And when I watch professional traders how they trade, they say the same thing. They have an in, they have a zone where they enter mm -hmm. two positions or multiple positions. Position one has a target profit, means that if they enter in this zone here, they will exit it at like this top, which is like 156. So they'll trade at 142, exit the first position at 156. The second position or the third position they'll enter, they'll exit only off of an indication of a possible reversal. So if they're buying here, they'll exit here and here. So if I was a large institution, which is telling you that the market did correct down like 5%, 10% in this zone, in the measured move, the big banks are probably not here anymore. See, these big mm -hmm. moves are screaming to me that they're gone. So you're in dangerous territory right now if you buy right now. Yeah. But, hey, I may be wrong. It may go up again. If it does go up, it may, if it hits the 180, it's $3 up, I would be very cautious above 180. I agree with this comment 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's how they make their it's how they make their daily money. Like I would love institution institutional traders can read order flow. Mm -hmm. Right? If you buy on Robinhood, Robinhood's selling your information. Yeah. So they want you to lose, which is fine. I, I don't I actually prefer it that way since we live in a corrupt society on um, the corrupt market the more corrupt the more it is designed to make retailers traders lose the more i make 
because I trade almost opposite to what how I see other traders on Forex traders trade. Like, you know, when I watch YouTubers trade, they all say buy here zones. I just like, where are they going to lose money? There's a good possibility that retail traders are going to lose money here in this zone. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong, but for me, I would do, I would find a way to see where they're going to enter because they're probably going to do this interesting move. You see how we have a, 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 a double top right here? Yeah. I have a feeling that many people, if we YouTube it right now, that people are saying, hey, there's going to be a triple top. And off that triple top, we're going to hit. And then we're probably going to break this hot top to go higher. I would argue that you are already too late in the trade. You should have entered earlier. See, I'm just not, I'm not even looking. I'm just looking like long term. I I mean, I, I would not do, oh, dang, I can't tell you what to do. In my perspective, I see the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, all 80, 90% lower in the coming few, in the coming future. Mm -hmm. and, and if you ask me why, it'd be like, why do you see that? Because our recession is going to be either two things. I'm sorry, either a stagflation, deflation, hyperinflation, or inflation crash. All of that is bad for stocks. Mm -hmm. Stagflation is worse for stocks, way worse. But I think that I think the uh, uh, the argument is that they're going to think that this market is going to go back from 170s to the 400s, which is possible. But I would say, if it does go up to the 400s you will see the next monthly candle very, very big. For snow? I don't know if it's going to – it got bid way up in 2021. I, I remember that. Let me see. Uh, my charts are all nasty. But that's looking at it on the one-hour perspective. But if you look at it on the four-hour, just to make it look – oh, it beat that high, so four-hour. I mean, I, I don't like doing this manually. I like computers doing it for me. It's so much easier. I'm, I'm already missing things already. Here we go. Here's the four hour perspective, guys. And I hope this is not boring, you guys. <laughs> no, but, just it's getting late for our, us East Coast folks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. My gym time got cut to an hour now. Ugh. Oh, that's all right. I, I work out twice a day. Oh, wow. Good for you. You can do yeah, that man. when you're uh, like self employed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say this uh, uh, when we finish the call, uh, I'm going to show you something off of Rumble. Why you should, why you should start streaming off on Rumble. Okay. It is a lot. It's going to be. YouTube takes like half of the revenue too. I think like the revenue I get, they, they take like 55% of the revenue yeah. or something. YouTube, I mean, uh, maybe I'm having bad luck on there, but I mean, I've been on YouTube for a long time. So, yeah. A second. As much as I like, I like the platform. I just wish it was more free. But, you know, it's funny. When it I don't use a thumbnail, YouTube like takes the worst pictures of me. Yeah. In the video, it's like, what the heck? It's weird. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. Look at that. I don't know. If it was me, I would be out of the trade. I would not be in this trade uh, other than down here holding the trade out. This is dangerous. But, oh, so at this point, so you would, I see it pulling back a bit. So well, explain to the audience. Why you would be so, out? Let's look at some history to look. Every time it hits a major area that, okay, retail idiots buy, the banks slam it down. Look, we can have this argument over here. Let's say, hey, hey, Andre, what's happened over here? Look, every time it does this, it slams down. Look, mm -hmm. all the traders think it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to break that high. And look, not 180 down to 150s, 140s. In a matter of a few day, few hours. This is a four hour. You should like you, you keep track of all your um, investment mm -hmm. performance. Like so, I've been tired portfolio. Uh huh. I've been tired portfolio. If people can see. Like, yeah, I, 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 I want to see. I want to see how how you're doing with this. Um, yeah, Watch, I'll show to, you one of my I robots. At my game when it comes to this, like a lot yeah. of my stuff is just long term stuff. Like this robot here, I don't like to show people the innards of my robots because I, I, I don't trade by hand anymore. I stopped doing it outside of dividend stocks. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, like I just ran this robot and it's called Fire Falcon. This oh. robot has made $17,000 in the last Wait, it's few years. Called, it's called Fire Fauci. Oh! Oh, I thought that's no. what you said. <laughs> Fire Falcon. Fire Falcon. Oh. <laughs> but like, I measure my robots to see how much they make because. 
they trade exactly how I'm talking about. They look at the news, they measure everything. And like, if people start like watching this stuff, like, look at this. I mean, I may be wrong, but I would be out of this trade and holding one trade out of my main position and holding a carry trade over. Yeah. Like, Not copy trades. Copy trades. I mean, it's a good way. It's a good business, actually. It's a very oh, good I need business. to call some of those people. Next time we do a live stream, I'll start just, I'll go down the list and just call some of those people on Facebook. Let me see. I mean, if we, how will I say this? Uh, can I trade snow? Give me a second. Let me see if I can trade snow. Yeah. I'm going to have to sign off here in a few minutes. No, I can't trade snow. But I uh, put uh, us on a hybrid schedule again, so I go to the office like every other day. Uh, what is it? Uh, Oh, it's not too bad. Then you, you get more free time then, right? Well, I was working from home all the time, but I don't know what oh. I was doing, honestly. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm going to run my robots on Tesla, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, and I'll see how it does in 30 days or in, in cool, a month. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have a, like a month from now. We'll follow up and yeah, uh, we'll see. see. I mean, some of these robots, like NVIDIA, 200 bucks. Cool. I should have stayed in. You know. Like Euro Yen made $21,000 in the last few months. Oh, based on what initial investment? 1000 Really? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I run, wow. all, I, said, like, I run all my robots where you can see the P&L for it. So it's not a big deal showing a P&L. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, for the traders out there, if someone is afraid to show you a P&L, question that. Big red flag. I sure. I don't mind showing PL. Well, a lot of times they just deal. make them up. Like the copy trades people, they send you um, their statement. It's like fake. It's oh yeah. Spelled. So what what I would ask is show hey, show me the actual trade entry. I, I think we did this last time. I showed you my trade entries and times. I can show every detail of it. Even yeah. my even my comments. So when when my robot makes a bad trade, I'm like, why the fuck did you make a bad trade? Why? Yeah. Did bad robot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, also there's errors too. Yeah. I hate errors. And I've been programming for like, I'm 34 now. Fuck. 21 years now. 21 years. Mm -hmm. So there's still errors at my level. But we'll yeah. see. Uh, I can't trade snow, but I can trade Tesla and everything. So I'm going to see how we can manage it out. I know someone that's never programmed and they took the test to join Amazon. Like if you've never mm -hmm. programmed, you're not going to pass a programming test, right? Yeah, programming. I mean, it depends on what language. I mean, some language is called. Uh, there's a new language called shortcut, and also. Oh, I'm sorry. They you know that chat to me. I know. I tried to work for a company called DTCC, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, and they gave me a programming test to weed me out of the hiring process, and they succeeded mm. because I didn't pass that. And I have yeah. an IT background too. Just like second. Uh, I got. I got all my. I have my library over here. To show you yeah. the books that I've read. But uh, uh, there's a couple of textbooks you guys want to read as the programming. But I will say this. I got to be careful how I say this. If you trade, it is best to trade in teams. If you trade without teams, create your own team. So for me, I trade very solo. I do have an insiders group that me and my friends trade cryptocurrency. So we're kind of like the, oh man, we're kind of like a bank in cryptocurrencies. We all trade it together. But, uh, I need to join more groups. I'm in. I'm in one, but I. I no, no, no. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm talking like an actual group where we know our positions. Yeah. And uh, like, so for me, my team is a bunch of robots. Uh, your team is THB. So if you guys make your own insiders private trading group, that would be very influential. You guys can move the stock price possibly. I'm working on that. I, obviously, I've got the audience now, so um, I'm working on like mm -hmm. a Patreon and stuff like that. I just gotta, I've just gotta do it. Oh, I, I'm, after this call, I, I gotta show you this. The, the basically the Patreon stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, we gotta end it here soon because it's getting. Oh wow, we got a whole bunch of people. Oh, thank you guys on Rumble. I'm sorry I gave you like no attention. My bad. Oh, they're commenting on Rumble. Yeah, there's oh. there's seven live right now. We've held, I mean, this audience, we've, we've held almost 20 the whole time. We've been going, yeah. going almost three hours. Thank you, guys. Like, this is like, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I did another well, live stream. I've been at this for a year and a half, and this is the most consistent audience I've ever had. Let me see. Master Nicholas. Oh, man, so many messages missed. 
<laughs> my gym, the gym guy. Would... <laughs> it's okay. Oh, someone I from the to... gym. Yeah, because uh, today's uh, we're gonna be doing a hundred pull-ups, a hundred dips, um, a hundred. Uh, it's called a uh, hundred pull-ups, hundred dips. I'm, I'm trying to get to the one-arm pull-up level. I'm almost there. Oh, nice. I lost yeah. enough weight to where I can actually do a pull-up now. Nice. Yeah. How much you weigh now? Like, uh, take a guess. Like two ten? No, I, I used to be. Oh wow, what one ninety? No, lower than that. I, I lost a lot actually. One eighty? Yeah, or about there. Nice. We're yeah. same then. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to be one eighty at two to five percent body fat. That's my goal. What's your height? Five nine. Oh okay. Oh, almost the same. Wow. Yeah, because um, I was I was too heavy honestly, but. I, I kind of like cut back, cut like a lot of like, you know, sugar and stuff like that. Like a lot of like um, breads, things like that. And it, it helped me. I mean, I got, I got a, what is it? Strict diet, strict walking plan, 22,000 steps lot. every day. Oh, wow. I do. There's actually something called step bet um, that, that mm. you make money for stepping. Make money for stepping. Yeah. Um, it's you just, you, you, you put in like 40 bucks a game. You come out with like sixty. You you make like twenty bucks. It's it's a way to make side income. It's not much, but it's something. But yeah, I do that, and then like I eat like once a day now and stuff. So sometimes I like my appetite's like gone way down too. I I mean I, I'm staying hungry. Like right yeah. now I'm starving. Oh really? Absolutely starving. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah. what is it? I I yesterday I I did four. Actually, I don't know. I, I gotta do the calculation. Give me a second. <laughs> I don't know if I, I can ran a hundred, hundred pull-ups. Yeah, that's easy, man. Yeah, hundred pull-ups with you. a hundred pull-ups with a weight vest or with a uh, with a with a forty-five. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a. I'm very close to the one-arm pull-up set. You're still in that military shape. Oh no, I, man! Military. I tell people I was working fourteen-hour shifts. I was mm -hmm. like one hundred and thirty pounds in the military. Yeah. Like there's no free time. What do you uh, bench press? I wow, well, I don't know. I haven't benched in like seven years. Oh really? Yeah. yeah well, if you, so you're doing pull ups, push up, hundred push ups. Yeah, all with body, all with weights though. We're doing with like a hundred pound weights. Oh wow. Uh, dips with weights, sprints mm -hmm. with weights. So it's very it's calisthenics workouts, but with a additional weight. Is your gym? Is there like a lot of people mm -hmm. in? reasonable shape in your gym or do you have like fat people in there and stuff i would say that at the times that i go it's only in shape people because we go like 9 10 11 12 at night oh so you're with like a group of people then yeah because yeah. when i go see i just i just go on my own I, I don't have like a group but it's like a there's a lot of like no offense to anyone but there's just a lot of scrubs in the gym mm. and then uh do you guys have a routine like we have a day. I have like a day-to-day -day routine. Like work out six days, two times a day, one day off, and it's like my legs still hurt from running this morning. I ran. I'm not doing uh, enough, honestly. I'm not probably scratching the surface of like what you do. I do cardio. I do. Um, I I do curls. I do uh, chest press. I do uh, legs. Um, I do abs, but it's. <sighs> I'm not doing enough. I'm not like. I, I need. I need to ramp it up. I would mm. say. And then I walk to the gym and then I walk back. Sometimes awesome. I run. What you guys what you guys could do, since you are supporting his channel, if you guys can, you know, get your friends or family to subscribe to his channel, if you guys get him to a full time position where he can talk about finance, because basically the only reason why I can do this is because I'm not employed. Like I work out like four to five hours a day. Every single day except for Sundays and Saturdays. Sometimes that's Saturdays. what I would do. That's what I would do because, you know, the thing with this job, even working from home and stuff, even when the job's not that busy, you still have to be here online. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like it's not like I can just cut out. And I've done that before, like on a lunch break. I've gone to the gym, but I only take – I'm done in under an hour in the gym, you know. Wow. I mean, so usually if we didn't have this call, I will be in the gym for like three hours. See, that's what I would do. It would be like a hobby for me. Like I, I would mm. be in perfect shape. If I didn't yeah. do this. It, it tells like I, when we get off this call, I'll show you what I'm talking about, what you, mm -hmm. you, can, you can do to help transition you off of it. Because I, I mean, we're talking about, ah, I just say it when we're done. 
<laughs> there's a lot more I could do. I mean, I know money wise, even right now, like there's way mm. more, I'm leaving a lot on the table. Like with this audience I have right now, I'm leaving a lot on the table. I know I am. Yeah. Your audience would be. They want, they want a Patreon. I just haven't set it up yet. Or uh, how do I say it? You can do with uh, me. Kevin does open up your own ETF or stock. He's on right now. You know, I get notifications for certain channels. Like he, he's like, he's on now again. He posts like eight times a day. I don't watch him. I don't watch him, but I just some channels I get like notifications for. Oh my! God. Okay, that's your okay. That, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's your. I, I just saw the question mark in the Patrick Thomas uh, comment. What did you think? He, I don't know what he's afraid of. Uh, like he should he should join because he is the coach of YouTube. It coach. would get him exposure. Yeah, his would get channel him exposure. is. I don't understand. Like if, if I was trying to, you know, pitch a product or something, I'd be glad to have, I'd say, look, you know, combine 3000 member audience. Yeah. At least, you know, like I would be all for that, but none of these, these people are cowards, you know, I, I yeah, would I say mean, the, um, the elevate people, even though their product, and I got a refund for that, even though their product was scammy, hmm. they, they had the balls to come on, you know? Yeah. I mean, long as someone goes on, I, I would, I give them more kudos. Cause like, I'm talking to one big YouTube channel, a dating channel, a cooking channel. Uh, where's it? I'm going to check my inbox. I'm, I'm talking to all these big YouTubers so we can have yeah. them on the platform. Because The dating coach we had on, he was great. Like that first yeah, time. I liked him. Yeah. Oh, actually, it's because of him. And when I, when I talked to him, he gave me the idea of hooking up and going on to these uh, other websites. Mm -hmm. And now I got meetings with other groups, uh, other private investors for private uh, deals. Oh, really? Yeah. So you exactly. private message him like on Facebook? Yeah, yeah here, here. Because I was wondering, like, how are you getting your clients, right? And his yeah. clients are coming from different websites that you can just log in, talk to them. And I'm like, I got private pictures. I got business pictures. I, all, all I got to do is add my profile and start talking to these people. And now it's like, wow, I'm having meetings with these individuals, either online or in person. Yeah. And it's like, because basically if, for me to do business, I'm usually the financer. I don't want I don't want a physical role. Of it. I just want to give you money and you just pay me back money. Yeah. Hey, so your um your gym people like you do you like meet all these people at the gym or yeah. you know them already? Yeah, we have uh, some through the military, but we just met uh, basically when you have how do I say it? when you have a nice body and you want to be like their body, you want to work out with them. So like uh, when it comes to Friday, uh, so Friday we're going. To uh, rock climbing, to see how we do. And rock climbing so no should be good. Talks like at my gym, like no one talks. It's like just it's an individual thing. Wow. You know? Really. A lot of scrubs. Yeah. I mean, I, I would. Do you know any? Is there any guys who have like a pretty decent body there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would just but, go like, up to them, say, "Hey, what's up, bro? I'm trying to find a gym partner. Can I copy your workout?" Because I'm kind of like in and out of there i don't spend enough like i need to spend more time there you know i mean there's a lot of people that would work out i love working out with other people just because i i, I push even harder right so like uh uh monday we did on monday we did sprints and we and i do uh one hour sprints we run for 20 seconds walk for 40 seconds run for 20 seconds and usually i mean i, I i'm in and out but we had to slow down for the other guy but it was it was nice to like burst with him you know just, just sprint yeah know. i used to i used to do stuff like that it's been a while I mean, but um gosh. i would even play like they have basketball courts and stuff i, I need to do like yeah. team team stuff like that i'll show you guys real quick before i head out one second ah, oh my old man legs <laughs> well with the, all the all the work workout you're doing i mean it's understandable I had a thigh issue the other day. Oh I, I started yeah. golfing. I don't know if you golf. I so, golf, started golfing again. My headset. Hey, before you guys go, this is what I work out with everywhere I go. This is. Oh, it looks like a, a bulletproof vest or something. Yeah. Give me wow. One second. Yeah. It is. Uh, Let me see how many pounds it is. It is about fifty-two pounds. Wow. Yeah, I run for it with like, I run with it everywhere I go. For two hours, I run with it. Pull-ups, I run with it. Where do you get something like that at? 
Amazon. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I do this wow. and also with the parachute, but you get used to it. Like, like it got like it got like my blood and sweat and tears in this thing. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Here you go. This is how it looks inside. If you guys want it. This is this. There's 20 of these. Wait. I wonder how far I could walk with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would try it out. I mean, if you want to cut weight quick, do 20,000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. I do 20, I do 20,000 steps every day now and my legs are still killing me, but 20,000 steps plus, uh, uh, normal workout. You'll be, you'll be doing like four to five hours a day. I used to do 20,000 steps a day, but the problem is my diet wasn't good. I have vices like this, you know, milk. I mean, here's you know, my, here's, I get it. In here's, the my, jug. Oh, here's my yeah. cheap food. The, oh yeah. Uh, uh deer deer jerky and it's not too bad oh yeah but i tell you like y'all we all have our cheats like so my cheat is cookies mm -hmm. i only eat like one cookie a day that's it i used to be able to like working out allowed me to kind of stay like at the same level i could just eat whatever and not gain mm -hmm. weight basically so i was just maintaining maintaining God, i mean i, I want that I cut out like the sugar and stuff like I don't do I don't do this very often anymore. I just got one of these the other day and it goes quick. But this is I, I use like um I actually started I get water and I just use these. So um, uh, do, like energy stuff. Do you have an ideal body? This is my ideal body right here. Do I have an ideal body? Yeah. Here. This guy right here I follow. Oh his okay. like this guy does pull ups way better than I do. Yeah, I thought I can do pull ups good. I tell people like, if you want a good measurement of your body, try to do like a hundred pull ups. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, real quick. I'll Actually, I never. This is, this is like the first time I ever, I have ever talked about this ever on on any social media. Yeah, we platform. should bring this up more. I mean, not just finance, but like, yeah, definitely. I mean, being healthy is part of uh, like overall. Yeah. You know. He's got to follow, and like he's just, he's our weight, you know. He's the same weight as us, but he looks massive, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Because I'm only seven percent higher than him in body fat, and that's really? why. What's your what's your percentage? I'm about 11, 10, 11 right now. I'm probably more than I, that. I got this stupid little bit that won't go away. I get the same I thing. I get the same thing. So so sickening, man. Yeah, that's the last place that it goes to. Yeah, the stomach and the. Like these guys are like 200 plus pounds. I like he shows people 200 plus pounds, like 10%, yeah. 5% body fat. Yeah. That's what I want. Yep. Oh, I can't wait. It's tough. Oh, yeah. It's tough, but I get all day. Well, yeah, it's good. So, anyway, so you got some ideas. Should we end the live stream? And then you said you got some yeah. ideas. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you some cool stuff, man. Okay. Let me end the broadcast here. Wow. Three hours. Good stream, wow. everybody. Thank you all for tuning in for those of you that stayed Thank on. You. Yeah. All right. Let me end it and I'll stay in the studio.